Warning. The Drunken Peasants podcast is full of comedic exaggerations, independent thought, insensitivity, and other offensive content. We strongly urge all viewers and listeners to keep their brains and their skulls throughout the entire duration of this podcast. Failure to do so will result in immediate death. If you wish to support this podcast, there are several ways to do so. First, you can sign up for a free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants. Audible is the foremost seller of audiobooks today with hundreds of thousands of titles to satisfy all manner of tastes. Second, if you shop on Amazon.com, please use the Amazon affiliate links in the description section of this video. Every purchase you make helps to support this podcast's existence. Third, please peruse our merchandise and see if any of it strikes your fancy. We sell a lot of t-shirts, so we must be doing something right. One more thing before I go. To make an official submission to the Drunken Peasants, whether it be a video for one of our segments, or fan art, or a picture of you wearing one of our shirts, or anything you think we might want to use on the show, that stuff needs to be sent to the Drunken Peasants Facebook inbox. Please do not send correspondence, as this will be deleted unread. With all that shit out of the way, it's time to begin the show. From the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Fuck it! <laughs> you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. What the fuck are you talking about, atheist? You know, it's okay. Crazy. You're nothing, okay. KJ. You're garbage. Okay. I just want to no, no, be no, no, light. No, no, no. You're fuck garbage. Up, fuck <laughs> up. And now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. We'll do it live. Okay. No. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Welcome to a wonderful pre-recorded edition of the Drunken Peasants Podcast. If you want to know which episode number this is, look in the fucking title of the video. We tried to... Smoke weed every day. We, we, we tried try to, to do that. Yeah, we tried to number them. I, I always feel like I need to shut up for the smoke weed every day. You do. Um, yeah, you gotta let them talk. Yeah, yeah. But we tried to number them, and then we had to cancel an episode, and we're like, fuck, that one's going to be wrong. It's going to, it's not going to match up. So it's episode blah, blah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Drunk and Peasants podcast episode number M. Paul, did you see that thing I sent you that someone, like, just, like, it wasn't, like, crazy, but it was, like, someone took the new God of War thing, and it was, like, Paul of War, and I looked at it, and I was like, that does look a lot like fucking Paul. It's weird. Yeah, minus um, minus the fact that I'm a flabby fucking mess. The I mean, face, yeah, though. the face, the face. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about filing like a like a like a lawsuit or something, getting some Sony money for you using should. my likeness in a video game. And Paul, we all know you're mu you're uh, actually muscular under that oh, fucking yeah. ridiculous yeah, suit oh, of course. that you wear. Yeah, I'm 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 real muscly. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is hey there, muscly arms. <laughs> Dude, Paul bench is like six hundred pounds, easy. Easy, dude. Like, I can, I, I can press. Is it, is dude. it benching it when, when it's attached to you? When I was fist, when I was fisting, <laughs> when I was fisting, maybe Paul, it is. <laughs> when I was fisting Paul that one time, like I could feel how like taut and strong his ass muscles are. You know, like Paul I works so, flabby. Yeah. Paul yeah. looks flabby, but you actually touch that shit, it's solid. Muscle. You know, it, his yeah. his sphincter, I heard, was unbelievably powerful that it almost it nearly broke my wrist yeah it almost yeah. like clipped tj's hand right off of his wrist yeah it's crazy yeah. i never uh, i never skip ass day when i go to the gym <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I always make sure i'm day. doing my my sphincter clenches and uh you know just yeah you gotta, <laughs> everything's clenches. gotta be clenches. tight paul can lift can deadlift uh 250 pounds just using his ass yeah yeah wow. well, what they do is, is they chain uh 250 pounds to a very slender butt plug so i have to really <laughs> bear down <laughs> and lift up man and i can do it i can do it dude my ass That's is impressive. That That's impressive paul i've seen him do it this is true yeah. everything he's saying is true he does it at the same gym where howard bloom does his thousand push-ups every day <laughs> it's, it's good it's well, good. He does that, well, he does that right when he wakes up, TJ. <laughs> and, no, no, it's, it's, he does it's it good. very slowly. It's good <laughs> anti-rape uh, training as well, too. Because if anybody ever tries to force their dick in my ass, I could just snap it off, dude. Holy with one shit. Yeah. You just crush it into, like, a spaghetti noodle. Dude, Paul's like a yeah. Shaolin monk with his ass. Like, someone attacks Paul's ass, and it's just like, <laughs> what the Paul's ass has the same capabilities as the Play-Doh Fun Factory. He yeah. can make it like into a star shape, yeah. a, a, a rectangle, mm -hmm. a circle. I mean, that's, it, the, that, that's entry yeah. level shit. Like my, my ass <laughs> is basically shit. shit. 
Have you guys have you guys seen that? Uh, I, that, I once that saw channel? him shit out a perfect statue of Jean Luc Picard. <laughs> yeah, from yeah, Star Trek: The Next Generation. Too. That was have a request I had, like. That yeah. YouTube channel that's basically just a hydraulic press, crushing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, crushing yep. various. Uh, I could do that easily with my ass. Like I could have like a billion subscriber YouTube channel. Yeah, you should do that hydraulic you, ass channel. YouTube won't won't let me show my asshole, so I'm I'm uh, shit out of luck, man. Yeah, wow. but it's educational. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure they know it's educational content because you know that's some real bullshit, Paul. Jesus, YouTube YouTube fucking sucks, guys. It does. Everyone needs to write YouTube and say that they need to fucking let they need to change their no asshole policy so that Paul can do his hydraulic ass channel. Seriously. Free like, Paul's asshole. Hashtag like, free Paul's ass. I could do like a whole like series on anal defense techniques, you know, like different things, different ways you can crush uh, you know, an invading penis. Just, you know. I mean, Paul, you could tell your horror story of the time, too. What about that wrestler too? who uh, who uh, overcame that other wrestler just with his dick? Yeah. What if that guy's dick went up against Paul's asshole? Oh, what shit. Would, what would win? I he, don't know, he, man. He well, gave him, it, like, a hip toss, but I guess in this case it would be just, like, a dick toss. It's the unstoppable force meets the, the immovable object. Damn. <laughs> what, what happens? We gotta see that. We gotta make this happen. Yep. Get that wrestler. I don't know who he is, but his dick is strong. Yeah, get that wrestler to fuck me in my ass for the show. That sounds <laughs> to <see>. great. <laughs> to see. <laughs> well, we gotta know. Well, we gotta we gotta know who's gonna win. I guess so. Yeah. All right. Time to take a look inside a random article on the DP Wiki. Time to learn something. We used to do this with regular Wikipedia, but now we use the DP Wiki. Link in the description. Also helps you new fans out there yeah. figure out what the fuck we're talking about. You're learning the lore of the Drunken Pet. Oh, oh, this is a good one. It's Dorn! Wow. It's Dorn! Be nice and you'll be approved. Dorn being used like a puppet to spread Keen's message. I've heard that. I've heard the theory that she's actually the puppet master. Oh, wow. Dorn pulls the strings. Brett. Pulls yep. the strings! You know, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Dorn, also known as Don Keen, is the wife situation Dorn. of Brett Keen, who <laughs> lives very closely with him on the receiving end of his fists. <laughs> she is also the mother of uh, individual of some water-headed idiots and has apparently been stuck with Brett for over 20 years. 20 years situation. Is that like true? Someone's actually been able to live with Brett for 20 years? <laughs> I can't That's, even imagine. I know. that She must be... A pretty strange person. The amount Dorn of self-loathing that it takes to stick with Brett for 20 fucking years. Like, I can't imagine. Dorn has appeared in a majority of Brett's recent particular video situations, mostly in the end of the video begging for money and cash. Brett has beaten her multiple times as proven in Brett Keen, the motherfucking opera by Psy 10 Atheist. Brett really loves his mac and cheese situations, so he forces Dorn to make them. Usually he eats them for breakfast situation when Brett <laughs> wants pie, Dorn has to bake it herself. This is because Brett is particularly allergic to food bought from the Save Mart situation. <laughs> Alright, we got two more sections here. History. Dorn was born to the third eagle individual of the apocalypse situation and Sarah Avery huh? in 1975. Little is known about Dorn's early life situation, but apparently she had a very religious relative individual who didn't want her to be with Brett Keen, individu with uh, Brett individual, <laughs> I'm sorry, which led to much drama situation. Dorn <laughs> drunken peasants. She has appeared. <laughs> she has appeared on DP. I'm sorry, Orn DP, a few particular times. Particular. Yeah. yeah. Mostly making her husband Mac Orn cheese in Brett's video situations. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They're missing sitting there, though. You did this, Paul. You fucking did this. What have I done? What have I unleashed upon this planet? <laughs> You're a bad person, Paul. Oh. Paul, at, at least some, someone will remember you for something, Paul. Time like, to learn. That Paul's so. ego guy. As if she doesn't have enough problems being married to Brett Key. <laughs> that is true. You're a monster, Paul. Dorn. But again, maybe Dorn is the one that you know, is doing all of it, TJ. Maybe Dorn is really your antagonist, Dorn. not Brett. <laughs> Maybe Brett's just a puppet, TJ. He just sits there, I actually like TJ. Like, make the video. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah Get she's that like money, the, Brett. She's like the uh, Mary Sue Hubbard to, to Brett Keen's L. Ron Hubbard, man. <coughs> he's, he's the face, but she's the, she's the machine, man. Wow. 
That's uh, deep. Mm, yeah. All right. We haven't done it for a little while. Um, maybe maybe we'll we will have done it between now and the time this airs. But it's not the troll. It's not a troll. All right, here we go. Hey guys, this is uh, going to be a video, and uh, I oh, just want to—it's it's, it's going say. to be a video. You don't fucking say. <laughs> it already is a video. This just in, ladies and gentlemen, a video which you are now watching, so you know it's a video. Okay, <laughs> is going to I be a video. Back to reality, guys. I figure out how I'm going to open my next book. It's going to be this is a this is going Dude, to be a book. You <laughs> have to do that now. You have to do it. This was going to be a book. This is going to be a book. But now it's not. It is. It's a book. It's a Talk book about. My experience uh, this past week, um, I got to go to the Ghostbusters premiere um, out here in L.A., sunny Southern California. Um, I got invited courtesy of Skechers, and we got to, uh, me and some other influencers got to see the movie ahead of time. And uh, I got to say, you know, having seen it uh, early and, and the whole experience, I have to say the... Um, you know, some people might not be too happy about this, but the movie is great. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, everyone in the theater was having a really good time. We had a lot of laughs and a lot of just and a lot of scares too. I'm which right, I was it's surprised not a troll. by troll. It, okay, dude, if you actually well, you know, it depends if you actually went to the event because if you actually went to the event, then he's just a paid shill at this point. He's a troll. You know, um, the original Ghostbusters. All right, uh, I could maybe believe someone could find that shit funny, but no one found it scary. Right. No one. So, bullshit. Yeah, but you're right, he probably is a troll. This is not true. Paul? Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm up in the air on this oh, one. Oh, shit. Because wow. a, lot of the, a lot of the early reviews of this stupid fucking Ghostbusters movie are good. Much to my horror, so maybe he's just one of those people that walked in there and was like, man, that was pretty okay. But, but don't you think that Sony has kind of invested a lot of money in making sure that influencers and other people say sure. it's good? You know, so I, I'm going to wait for the, the critics at large and the audience at large to kind of, like, oscillate on that and see where people end up, as opposed to this early shit where, like, I, I, you're right, I have seen, like, oh, it's really funny and really good. I'm like, come on. I think Sargon of Akkad uh, saw it and said that it was actually okay. He's garbage. So, I don't know. He's pretty anti-feminist and shit. Right. I mean, uh, I've I uh, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to see it. If I do see it, it's going to be to do a review of it for sure. So we got to see it. Ugh. We have to see it, dude. There's too much controversy. Uh, really wasn't that scary um in terms of, you know, the ghosts and kind of the yeah, supernatural the play, but uh this one had a lot more of it, a lot scarier, a lot of, th you know, Things jumping out at you, coming out of the screen, and stuff like troll, that. Troll, bullshit, 3D. troll. Yeah. And, uh, and this I have is a to... troll. This is a fucking troll. Paul? Shit coming. He's, he's I'm going not a troll. He's literally, he's literally trying to push you know what? every fucking button you to know fucking what? Paul, piss Paul has swayed me to my original position. Not a troll. He's a troll. What evidence do you have? I, because I he's he he's literally it. going through like a checklist of like Dude, what, Paul has swayed me. Watch not everything troll. I can say to piss off people to get views on this shit video. No, he, no, it's not. This is all sincere. This is a calculated. This is effort a, not to a troll. People's this guy is not boiling. a troll. Why exactly can't you just accept it? it? Look, dude, he's obviously a nerd. Not a troll. That is a troll. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is a troll. Well, you're wrong. It's okay. All you're right. wrong. Well, I guess the jury has spoken. OJ goes free. <laughs> hey, dude. OJ had his trial. If the glove don't fit, the you must acquit, TJ. <laughs> Tugging on the glove. Oh, it, it, what? I can't get it. Dude, the glove didn't fit. The glove didn't fit OJ. I mean, there was all that DNA evidence and overwhelming. Fuck that. The glove, man. The glove. Exactly. The black glove. They there was the DNA. Black glove. There was DNA that, you know, his nope. DNA was at the crime. Oh, that newfangled but you, but DNA. But you know what? But you know what the, th the saving grace was? The glove didn't fit. Let me ask you a question, Scotty. If you were going to murder someone, would you buy gloves that don't fit to do it in? No. Hell no. My gloves would fit, and then I would be convicted. <laughs> OJ, look, the glove did not fit. Yeah. You must have quit. Actually, I guess at this point it'd be wise to buy gloves that don't fit. Yeah. I always wondered, like, 
why they didn't just have OJ try on an exact same size pair of those gloves. Because, like, it's clear the reason the glove didn't fit is because it was all, like, shriveled up and covered in blood and had been sitting in water, damp, and, and then he was wearing a fucking rubber glove underneath it so he didn't mess up any evidence. Like, why not just buy another pair of the same gloves of the same size and have him put that on? It didn't fit, it didn't, Paul. Paul, it didn't fit, buddy. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Yep. Yep. Catchy saying and a very wise saying, too. If it rhymes, you get away with the crimes. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Action. Here's a here's a CNN story. It's eighth grader blasts white pri- privilege in a poem. Good. Should we play the feminist slam poetry intro then? Because <laughs> uh, well, how about an eighth new grader story. stirring the pot? Fourteen-year-old Royce man wrote and performed a poem he calls "White Boy Privilege," and he starts by apologizing for to everyone basically who's not white and male. Dear women. I'm sorry. Dear black people, I'm sorry. Dear Asian... Oh, my God. I'm sorry! You know what? This kid probably saw this shit, the the type of shit we play. And was like, yeah, I went on in on that. Yeah, I want to do that, because, you know, people applaud for them even if they suck. And I want that, because I have no talent. So... Ugh, I just feel bad for some kids sitting there fucking brainwashed, like, I'm a bad person. I'm sorry to all these people I never did nothing to. Like, ugh. He was white, TJ. Is there a greater crime? No, I guess not. Americans, dear Native Americans, dear immigrants who come here seeking a better life, I'm sorry. Dear everyone who is in the middle or upper... Okay, yeah, the immigrants who come here seeking a better life, you know that why? Because their countries fucking suck. All right? You don't need to apologize to them. They're here because it's better. Fuck you. Little retarded eighth grade piece of shit. TJ's patriotism coming out. Ugh. Don't insult this country. <laughs> you ever die for that flag, boy? Shut up, Scotty. You can't I'm fault just saying, this kid. He's playing. He's playing the sympathy pussy angle. Like he's hoping yeah. that, like, you know what I mean. Like whatever. You you got to do what you got to do at this age. You're right. Paul's like that would be me. If, if Paul right. was in school now, this would be Paul. I bet you this is just a fucking ploy to get some fucking feminist pussy at his school. There's probably some hot chick that's a rad femme in his class, and he wants like he wants to get his dick inside <laughs> her vagina. And like, who can blame him? You know. You guys are just feminist apologists. That's all right. I'm sorry, I'm male. Can I can I get my dick in your pussy now? I'm sorry to the the Indians the and the immigrants. The minds of TJ and Paul come to light. Class white boy, I'm sorry. I have started life at the top of a ladder while you were born on the first drum. I say now that I would change places with that, you and an That's how different it is, really. It's like, okay, you were born at the top of the fucking ladder, and they're literally not even, they're, they're barely just, like, stepping on the ladder. Like, really? That, like, that would be like if you had nothing. You're, you know, that, that's, what, that's what the implication of stepping on the first rung of the ladder is. Like, you're at the very fucking right. bottom with not a fucking thing in the world. Okay, let's think about this actual ladder for a second. The people on the first rung of the ladder are like... Starving, fucking emaciated, distended belly flies in their face, children in Africa going like. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's the fucking bottom rung of the ladder. And the top rung is like fucking jet setting playboy getting his dick sucked by models every yeah. night, fucking rich dude. I would say that even homeless people in the first world aren't even at the bottom. They're on bottom. like the third rung yeah. of the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. So fuck this kid. He's so dumb. What a miserable sack of shit. Hope his bus fucking careens into a gorge. Probably not, because to be (laughs) honest, being privileged is awesome. I'm not saying that you and me on different rungs of the ladder is how I want it to stay. I'm not saying that any part of me has for a moment even liked it that way. When did the idea come that you're going to tackle that terminology, white boy privilege? Mm -hmm. Uh, How long Uh, has he... As his fucking... Obviously, feminist mom or whatever the fuck yeah, she is, yeah, so smiling, like yeah. looms over him. Like mm-hmm. I would say, either mom or teacher or something. Something. Like, yeah. 
we'll def- see. Definitely. This message been stern. Of that uh, fucking ill. I knew about white privilege and male pri- privilege for most of my life, but yeah. I never realized. What? What? You're like, fu- okay. For most of my life. For, well, most of the four, 14 years. That's what it says. 14 year old. Oh. Yeah. 14. Holy shit. So for at least eight of those years, he's known. So by the time he was like, you know, six. To understand the concept. He understood yeah. white privilege. He couldn't possibly. It, he it's, understood it's a ridiculous male privilege. argument. He, what has he, okay, what has he done in, uh, independently on his own in life where he has all this worldly experience where it's like, I can definitively say it. And even if it was, that would just be a personal experience argument. It's not really a valid argument to say, well, I think I think I have experienced it and seen it, so it's true. And why the fuck is this on the news? And also, is this kid even white? I don't know. He kind of looks like maybe not to me. I, I, I guess that's how you def- that depends on how you define white. Yeah, like, look at me. This is fucking white. That shit's brown. Okay, what like, are you doing? What about like what about like an Italian or like a Greek person? Are they white? Because eh. most people would say they are. They're white-ish. <laughs> white-ish. <laughs> Whatever, TJ. How uh, prevalent it was in our society. You Until don't know that, you little idiot. When I went to a new school called the Paideia School, and we take a class called Race, Class, and Gender. Oh god. And oh. that really made me a lot more aware of the. Oh my god. So basically, uh, you went to a class that's run by an SJW, and basically just you've been browbeaten into be like, this is what you believe, listen to me, and you just drink the Kool Aid. And, you know, more than likely, your mom or whoever's sitting there is the person that, you know, has definitely been instrumental in the process. This, guy, this kid's gonna be climbing a bell tower in four years, guys, with a fucking rifle. I hope I hope, it works. I hope it works out for him, man. This like, is brainwashing. This is brainwashing. Like I hope, like all, the only caution that I would throw him is that there's a lot of sad-looking men hanging around SJW rallies that aren't getting <laughs> the pussy. Um, so you know, just be aware. But I hope that this works. Just show this kid what Steve Shives used to be, yeah. what he is now. <laughs> this, this is gonna be you at 35, dude. This is gonna be you in 21 years. You'll be a gaunt, skeletal figure, a shade of your former self. Bereft of passion. But I'll have a girlfriend. I'll have a girlfriend, guys. Oh, yeah, you're going to have a girlfriend, but she ain't going to sleep with you, and she's going to control every facet of your life. Well, at least I'll have one. Like, well, yeah, I guess. Once a year, we have phone sex. (laughs) I have that other people don't often have. Many other people don't have. Uh, There are definitely some people who do deny that white privilege and male privilege exist, and I think that's because they choose to not see it. Oh. They choose to see. Oh. The- You're just blind. What TJ. an airtight TJ, argument. The Matrix TJ, has me. You. It, it's kind of like. It's kind of like how you actually believe in God, but you just choose not to. Yeah, you just, I just choose not to see him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, have a, I have a question, guys. As, as, as a uh, strident SJW, why do we have a white male speaking about this? I mean, yeah, it's good he realizes he's privileged, but. Isn't that, that is kind of true. realizing that privilege that he needs to step away from the conversation and let people yeah. of color step in? This is kind of offensive that this news organization is not going to acknowledge people of color. And yet again, put a white male, a white cis male on the air. You yep. know, when is this going to end? When is the time that's going to change before we can move forward as a society? I am offended by this clip even being played on this podcast. Young women of color have been doing poems like this for years yes. and years and years. No story. Then a white male stands up and does a poem that's a that's a shabby knockoff of a of what a female could have done, and it's a huge news story. Man, fuck this kid, man. Fuck this fuck country. Your fuck you. Fuck the patriarchy. The progress that we have made, and a lot of kids they learn these days when they're learning about the civil rights movement, for example, it's sort of put into their heads that now we're all equal, and. There is so much, so much on. progress has been made, but there's still a long way so to go. So who's bet. your audience here? Are you trying to reach maybe that white friend of yours that may not fully agree, but's definitely. open to listen? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to reach the people who are ready to have an open dialogue about this. There have been oh a lot of people who have God. commented on YouTube what? and just said insults without even mentioning the content of my poem or my beliefs. Just see that terminology and they're out. Yeah. But if they if they say I disagree with you, here's why, and then oh my god, it. there's so much fucking of that going on. I mean, like it's ridiculous. What you're saying is absolutely fucking ridiculous because it's it's your side of this argument that never responds to any sort of argument. 
Okay, I know because I've been having this argument for the past fucking, no. I don't even know how many you years. You just don't want to have an open dialogue with this kid, TJ. Open dialogue. Why would I want a fucking open dialogue with some dumbass 14-year-old don't even know what the fuck he believes yet? Dude, white privilege is prevalent. He just said so. I'm conv I am for one, I'm convinced. You're a privileged male. You need to shut the fuck up, TJ. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got a fucking future doing shitty poems, that's for sure. He does. That's going to pay the bills. <laughs> Let's see how far white you know what gets it in probably it, you know what if he got popular enough doing it he probably could go all the little feminist rallies and be like here's yeah. why I'm an evil white piece of shit and of course you get a ru you know rupturous applause at the end and be like yeah. my speaking fee is twenty thousand like oh yeah now I'm getting all the feminist poontang now Fuck we've got yeah, a, this white male that's gonna come up and flagellate himself in front <laughs> of the group <laughs> this is wonderful this is the best feminist card ever I feminist wish I could con. tear my skin off my back if there was a feminist con i would want to send tj there with a video camera oh TJ, tj would be fucking strung up from a tree yeah i think i'd just be killed what are you talking about <laughs> i think i would die <laughs> all for the views the last thing you would hear is big red's voice that would Fuck be like perfect smell that would be like a found footage horror movie you know <laughs> TJ accidentally attends a feminist conference. Yeah, we'll tell him it's like a Manson show or something. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they want that to be a horror movie now? Just drop him off there. And like, like have like an air horn with us or something. Like push him out of the car and like sound the air horn so everybody looks. Oh, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, we're trapped in a fucking... That we're trapped in a Where? convention. You are our well, trapped. No, I mean, it can't just be me. You gotta have fucking people to be killed by the. Feminists. Okay, Paul. Paul can be trapped with you. <laughs> Fuck. I think it should be all of us. Nah, I think I'll be busy. They that pick day. us off one by one. You're first, Scotty. I can run faster than you, TJ. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what do you mean? Doesn't matter. Big Red's gonna get you in a fucking chokehold. Holy shit. A yeah, stranglehold, if you will. And then, the, then her fucking underlings are going to claw you to death. They're going to snap at me to death. It's a modern uh, it's a modern feminist convention. I don't think fast running is going to be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> That's to get true. Away. Let me casually stroll away. Yeah. That's too far. Maybe they, maybe they roll at you like, uh, like critters, you know? <laughs> You remember the critter ball in the fucking yeah. second one? Damn, <laughs> maybe yeah, so. Critter ball. Yeah. I'm fucking reaching ball. back into fucking some obscure horror cinema yeah. of the 80s now. Yeah, you are. Didn't they have those at that museum in Seattle? Oh, yeah, they did. They yeah. did. Oh, yeah. yeah that was, had, that like, was cool. Actual critters. Yeah, they yeah, had like one they of They had the, Gizmo in there, too. Yeah. They also had, uh, they had a bunch of shit in there. They a had, lot of like, sci-fi They had Data's stuff. head. They had Data's head Star in that Trek. one episode where, it, where they had like the... What was head. it Time's Arrow? Yeah. Yeah, and then um, they had Janeway's uh, uniform there and... They had uh, some a bunch of weapons of... from different sci-fi series, and it was great. Oh, my. Yeah. That, what, what was yeah, that uh, museum called? Man? The uh, e EMP. Oh, yeah, EMP Museum in Seattle. Yeah. The yeah. Experience Music Project. Really cool. All really right, cool. next video. Brian Fisher says it's not okay for Christians to have diverse opinions. Okay. Why would it be? Yeah, because if you have a diverse opinion, then you're not a real Christian, depending on who you're asking. What do you? I mean, what is a diverse opinion? Like, they're not allowed to disagree on Yeah, things. I mean, that, that just means, like, you're not allowed to disagree with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, fuck you. I am. You want to be a Christian? Toe the fucking line, bitch. Stop Toe which line? For there's a bunch... There's already, like, a, it doesn't matter. There's already an immense diversity of thought within Christianity. No, there's not. He doesn't get to fucking declare what true Christians believe. Fucking piece of shit. What? What do you want? You know, talking about this... Scotty column, wants a lighter. It's actually kind of a snide column written by this Here Andy Walton, whom I do not... Uh, no. But he's what the fuck is this music? I don't know, dude. What is he? Is, are you going fucking swing dancing later tonight? <laughs> you gotta get yourself in the dude, mood. Dude, this guy lost some serious sponsors or something because, like, the quality of his show has just gone... I mean, like, at first he had this cool, kind of cool-looking set, and he sounded pretty clear. Now it's just, like, bad fucking music and, like, Argh. Now it's in a garage behind his house Yeah, or I mean, something. it just... And it looks like he's just tucked into some shit corner of a building. I don't think his show's making shit for money. I'm so shocked. He says, look, it's, it, it's fine for Christians to be all over the map on sexual ethics. Well, no, it's not. I mean, that's, that's exactly what we read about in Revelation. Mm -hmm. That's the it spirit is? of Jezebel. Who knows? Calls herself a prophet. Okay, Revelation is so fucking allegorical, metaphorical. 
there's no that you could have any fucking number of crazy fucking interpretations. Everything is like the beast with seven heads rise. I mean, like you don't know what that shit means if it even meant anything. Fucking idiot. But this claims to speak for God and seduces people into sexual immorality. You so claim no, to speak for God, okay too, asshole. For Christians to be all over the map. But TJ, his interpretation of the Bible opinions, is the correct that's what one. He's talking about. Not even talking mm. about behavior. Talking about opinions about sexuality. <coughs> it's not okay. Yeah. Uh, the Bible is abundantly clear about sexual ethics. Yeah, see? Uh, sex is reserved for marriage. Marriage is a union of one man and one woman. Homosexuality is a sin. Sexual immorality is a sin. Etc. These things are not ambiguous in the scripture. So no, right. it's not. I can just promise you. I promise you, one hundred percent. I believe this. If there is a God, He does not give a flying fuck where you stick your dick or what you stick in your pussy or your ass or anything else. Oh yeah, you know that's that's really interesting, TJ. If you just throw the entire Bible out, then yeah, you're right. We'll just throw the Bible out the window. Yeah, we might as well. Okay, TJ. Let me ask you a question. This what? book was written. By God, for the people. I mean, it wasn't obviously the people who wrote the book, but they got direction directly from God. Yeah, but God was drunk when he wrote it. <laughs> God doesn't make mistakes. He was he was kind of joking. Even though we don't know the nature stuff. of God, he can't make mistakes, TJ. That's clear to us. No, no, he was just playing around with some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. even oh, though no, he wasn't. Even, even though the entire Old Testament reads like a litany of God's fuck up. <coughs> yeah. Like, like the, the the Old Testament is basically how God failed in the beginning. Like, everything yeah, I mean, like, he uh, tries to do goes I mean, bad. Of course God fucking says he's perfect. He's a narcissistic fuckwit. But he was totally drunk when he wrote that book. When he sobered up, he wrote no, the New No, you Testament. guys don't know anything. Look, Paul, if you had three apples right now and God came into your house and said, there's two apples, you know who's right? God. Okay. You, get, you understand now, Paul? We know there ain't no apples. God is just house, right. Man. It doesn't matter. He's never wrong. There's no apples in Paul's house. That is true. The closest you'd get is like maybe some apple jacks or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's some there, there, there's apple candy or something. Okay, there, there's yeah. two boxes of apple jacks. How about that? Mm -hmm. It's not okay to have diverse, diverse opinions on those issues. It's not okay to have diverse opinions on life issues. Life begins at conception. Uh, every child in the womb is being knit together by God in the womb. Psalm 139. Again, that's, there's no place for no, diverse that's opinions not really what's going on. on whether it's a baby in the womb, because the Bible says it is. Luke 1. There's actually no room for any opinions on that, because we know how they, you know, we know how yeah. fetuses develop, and there's no knitting involved. You know, you guys can't invoke, like, God controls the rain when we understand how rain works. You know, you, you can't really do that. I mean, I guess you can, but that's why you're regarded as fucking idiots, because you're ignoring science. Yeah, we, I mean, like, we already know what that's going on. This is no longer the purview of opinion. Sorry. Nope. You know, Mary's pregnant. She goes into Elizabeth's place, and Elizabeth says, The baby in my womb leaped for joy. What is it? Says it twice in that passage. The baby in my womb leaped for joy. So, no, it's not okay for Christians to have diverse opinions on babies, life issues. Babies in the womb it's don't not leap for joy. So, yeah, just because it says. In the Bible, that you know, a baby did a dance inside its mom's stomach, reacting to something that she saw, doesn't make it fucking so. Babies don't dance. Yeah, they do. They don't leap for fucking joy. I can see it. I can see it doing yeah, like do. disco fever pose and shit. They jump for joy, Paul. <laughs> the disco okay fever. For Christians pose. have diverse opinions about evolution. <laughs> Genesis one one. In the beginning, God what created. The heavens and the earth. God did What's what? The heavens and the earth. That's everything. Yeah, that's another thing we know scientifically didn't happen. So, yeah. yeah. Nothing the, ambiguous bang? in that, ladies and gentlemen. The universe did not Cosmic evolve. The earth radiation. did not evolve. The world did not evolve. It was created by God. So, no, it's not okay for Christians to have diverse opinions on uh, evolution. And, yeah, if you're uh, right, uh, so then forth. that's true, but you have no evidence, so... <laughs> According to this book, that ain't never. I mean, you're, you're literally invoking something that we have a decent understanding of scientifically, which is like you know, estrus childbirth and animals, and including you know, many species of animal. We have like a knowledge on like their basically what it's like for them to be pregnant and what they go through. So this is just a ridiculous argument. It does. It holds no fucking water. 
And your other arguments are just basically, you know, God created the universe, which is, where's your evidence for that? Of course there's none. So it's a bunch of bullshit. The Bible. Oh, yeah. My interpretation, the Bible's right. Well, oh, no! This is a trigger warning. Here in the clinic, Hashtag Ben has no soul. Playing these Hillary You know, videos. anyone anyone that was surprised that Bernie ended up endorsing Hillary, it, it, I mean, has not been paying attention to politics. No. Yeah. I For, definitely, I was upset, but I wasn't surprised. I mean, everyone knew he was doing it on Tuesday. It was basically announced. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, if you just listen to his rhetoric leading up to it, it was pretty obvious that he was like... Moving towards that direct, like as soon as he said he would vote for her, I'm like he's gonna give her an endorsement at some point. I, sure. I kind of hoped that he wouldn't. You know. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I, 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 I wish. I, I wish. That this, I was like. Well, I wish I was that this a, wasn't oh, like ahead. like a norm in American politics where you know you've spent the the entire campaign trail through the primaries running up telling everybody why this person isn't good for for the country, and then at the end you. you I mean like. Bernie exposed Hillary for what she is. Corporate boss, mutable, mutable opinions, okay, like like all of these reasons why she's not good. Yeah. And now he, and then he comes out, oh, oh, vote for her. Like why? Why did why why is that a necessity in American politics? Okay, but Paul, what I what I heard, I was I was actually arguing with um Zonstar on uh, Facebook about this. He was like, well, okay, well, she said she'll endorse a public option for, you know, in health insurance, and she'll do $15 an hour minimum wage. And it's like, see, they, they, those were huge concessions. I'm like, it's good that Bernie got some concessions of, after basically selling out. You know, that's good, but... Let's yeah. be fucking honest. He d he clearly did not endorse a lot of Hillary's policies. He did not. He had a f a fundamental disagreements with Hillary about several fucking really important issues, and now he's endorsing her. I mean, obviously we know why he's endorsing her. I understand politically. It's like they want a unified party to try to beat Trump. Sure, but at the same time, it's like Bernie is basically you know someone with all his integrity and honesty that was behind his campaign is selling out to someone with literally none. Trump is doing better and better in the polls, by the way, Scotty. Well, uh, actually. Uh, he's he's it, it, it's he's more tied up in and uh, it was it Ohio and Florida or something, but H Hillary's actually pulled ahead in Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, fifty six percent of the country says she should. If Trump been wins Ohio, he will win. But it's, it's very well. It depends how he does in Florida too, but Ohio definitely would be an indicator. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? That is true. If a Democrat wins Ohio, it's pretty much over. But if a Republican does, he he usually has to win something else too. Yeah, like if if Trump won like Ohio and Florida, yeah, that then for sure. Yes. Yeah, they pretty much called it for Obama the last two times when he won Ohio. I mean, like I think right uh, after. I think Kasich is a pretty popular governor, and he's pretty much been very antagonistic Man, towards Trump. I'll, so yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. If Hillary was smart, she would try to get like him to endorse her or something. It's a possibility, you know, because he, he he was more of like a centrist one. If if he was like, you can be some cabinet position or something, like he he might take it. You know, I saw it's probably a, a good idea. I saw a bunch of people talking very positively about Jill Stein recently because I think she said something about Hillary that people liked, which is what she should be doing. She should be trying to steal Hillary votes and stuff. Oh yeah. A lot of people feel um, that Jill Stein, like obviously a lot of people wanted Bernie to take over. She offered to that to do that, but a lot of people just felt Jill Stein was like politically. Weak. That's, that's how she was kind of sold in the media is like kind of like a political neophyte. She doesn't really know foreign policy. She doesn't, she doesn't really know a lot of issues. She's kind of like a one-issue candidate. Yeah, but that's Trump too. Yeah, but Trump, uh, you know, Trump brings in the media view, so they they love him. I mean, I think uh, for a large part the media they attack Trump, but I mean, you know, they have to love him. He yeah. generates a lot of interest in their fucking products. So, of course, they, they really have to be like, we hate him. But then they, at the same time, you know, they're sitting there like, man, we love this guy. He's bringing in the views. All right. Yeah, so No one's tuning in like, let's see what Jill Stein's it's up true. to today. It's you true. Know? Well, she doesn't. And also, she doesn't have the party to back her yeah. also. Yeah. Um, so here's the Hillary Clinton video. Make no mistake. There are things to fear in this world. And we need to be clear-eyed about Like them. me. But we are each other's countrymen and women. We share this miraculous country. This land and its heritage is your... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm watching this. This is horrible. I'm watching this and all I can see when I look at her is my, my little lizard Nova. 
in her cage, <laughs> you know, just or a tank rather. All I, all I see is a fucking uh, robot reading words, you know, that are supposed to mean something to me, but I can tell she doesn't believe in a single fucking one of the words she's saying, so. I mean, like, that's what, but yeah, I mean, like, she, she just looks like my fucking lizard. Like, it's just there. I mean, like, I can see it. I think she really is a reptilian, guys. Like, uh, I mean, I'm not, okay. e I'm not even saying it as a joke. I think that Hillary is legit, like a reptilian no. being. No. From an extra dimensional realm. No. No? I think the evidence is pretty solid, dude. I don't think so. Just look at her. Just really look at okay, her. Okay, you're just taking your bias. Really and, look and at her, Scotty. I'm not Oh, really look at her? Come on, TJ. Look at her through the eyes of truth. Oh, my. Let me see. She is a lizard. Oh, my God. You're... Yeah. Exactly. Where's mine and everyone's willing to pledge allegiance and understand the solemn responsibilities of American citizenship. That's what indivisible means, that big word that every grade school student knows, that we're in this together, even if that's not always easy. So let's think better of each other. Let's hold together in the face of our challenge. Does, does it seem like any of these words come from anywhere within her? No. No, <laughs> no not even close. Not yeah, I mean, even, just, like... Look empty, at this empty just vessel. Like, it's, it, it's like she's trying to, to make a, a, a speech with, with gravitas. You know what I mean? Like, this is her approximation of a speech that's worth covering. Did she Jingoism, Empty platitude, appeal to blind patriotism, <clears throat> more jingoism, flag worship. You know what I mean? It just has all the elements of a shitty stump speech uh, cobbled challenges. together. Yeah, you're right. Not turn on each other or tear <clears throat> each other down. Yeah, that's, that's great, Hillary. Good job. That was real powerful. I'm so moved emotionally and intellectually by your brilliant fucking oratory. All right, Glenn Beck says, pack your crap and move to Texas before we close the northern border. Mm. So he's letting all of his viewers and listeners from around the country that don't live in Texas get here now. Because eventually, you know, they're going to close it off. What if his viewers are Mexican, though, living in Mexico? <laughs> would, he still, would he still want them to show up? <laughs> Probably not. No. If you've listened to me for a I long mean, I time, I guess they need waiters. I have told oh, you. There you go. We're passing all the exits. We're passing all the exits. Did you see who Donald Trump is saying that he wants to make as a, his vice presidential candidate? Yeah, General General Flynn. General Flynn. Everybody is com concentrating on what part of that? The abortion part. And he's a Democrat. He's a Democrat. He's a Democrat. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen why Donald Trump is saying that he wants General Flynn as the guy? Again, everyone will say because he's going to be a crossover candidate. Mm -hmm. No, because Donald Trump believes that there is real civil unrest coming and he needs to have somebody who has the experience of law and order. You've got to have a strong man. You've got to have a general of the army. Okay. Um, it's really not that controversial for a general to be in politics. There's been plenty of them before. I've seen generals run for president. It's whatever, you know? There's no, there's nothing that crazy about it. And Trump hasn't even picked his running mate yet. TJ, they need that strong man. Well, TJ, he's going to be a general and he's going to be vice president. I mean, so we know what's going to happen there. At least wait until Trump has officially made a selection before you start talking um, about why the selection was made. Why don't you at least wait until Trump has won? You know, if it looks like imminent that Trump is going to be elected, that'd be one thing to be like, oh shit, what is Trump going to do? But right now, there's that's a big if. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to talk about his VP choice, he hasn't even made it yet. Glenn Beck's got to talk about some bullshit. Well, of course, by the time this episode airs, he will have made it. So, whatever. Yeah, I guess that's it's, true. It'd be really funny if it was not this guy. It should be Meanwhile, Sarah Palin again. Barack Obama is talking about a federalized police force. So I'm talking to you because... I mean, I like told the you FBI... The DEA, um, U.S. Marshals, all those federal police forces that already exist. Shut up, Scotty. Don't confuse Glenn Beck with the facts. I've been trying to point out all the exits that we can. We keep missing them. 
Nobody wants to hear the God thing. Nobody wants to hear the God thing. I got it. Fine. I got it. Hey, plenty of people want to hear the God thing. That's why no you're one fucking, wants to hear it. The reason you're a fucking multimillionaire <laughs> is because there's tons of gullible idiots who do want to hear the God thing. I mean, look, Glenn Beck lives in a giant fucking mansion. You know he probably pays for all this shit, but then he's acting as if, like, everything's just going to go downhill any minute now. It's like, well, Glenn, look at your life. You, you seem to live in the lap of fucking luxury, so how worried can you really be? Shouldn't you be living in, like, a bunker, surrounded by armed guards, if you really believe, like, tomorrow's just gonna be the fucking day? He keeps yeah, cranking don't... out books, he keeps cranking out fucking media. I mean, there, do you think this a, is... There's a direct correlation. Uh, fuck. Of course they're gonna start mowing the lawn while I'm recording. There's a direct correlation between how worried Glenn Beck's audience is and how much money he makes. Because a lot of his money comes from shilling survival products and gold. So, um, I mean, it's pretty fucking blatant, Glenn, that you want to keep your fucking audience worried, scared about what's just around the corner. And yeah. I, I would revise that statement. Nobody wants to hear about the God thing. Nobody who cares about the truth and actual solutions to a problem wants to hear about the God thing. I mean, it's so nakedly apparent that he himself is not concerned about these matters no. based on his lifestyle. I mean, he, he still has every faith in the fucking system to keep on chugging on. Why do you think he's sitting here building his media empires and fucking publishing his books and doing all the shit he does? It's not because he thinks everything is calamitously fucking headed towards disaster. Yeah, I mean, he's constantly asking you to give him money. It's like, if he had no faith in currency and money and just had faith in gold, why would he want money? She'd be like, send me some fucking gold, and I'm gonna send you some survival packs, and, you know, buy guns, and, like... This guy doesn't believe any of that shit. He's, he's not some, like, like, fucking hardcore prepper, like, living in the woods. I mean, think about the very fucking business model of selling survival kits. The world is gonna come to an end, so... Give us this money that's gonna be worthless... And we'll give you food and resources. Which is going to be extremely valuable. Which, yeah, like, um, obviously the people who sell these survival kits don't believe in the fucking survival kit. Because they're obviously putting their faith in money. Just saying. Yeah. There's no other answer, I just want to let you know. There's <laughs> no other answer. But I understand you don't want to That's hear it. it. Look at the difference between Dallas and Ferguson <clears throat> and Baltimore. There's still a God culture here. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I told you to move to Texas for a reason. You're seeing that. I told you when things go to hell in a handbasket, you want to be around like-minded people. You're seeing that. Look at the difference between the, the shooting of six cops on our streets in Dallas and what happened to Dallas and what's happening today in Dallas compared to what happened in Ferguson and Baltimore. You're losing time. Pack your crap and move to Texas. Wow. Now, Paul, you already listened to this. Damn. Yeah. I was on top of it. So this just reveals why I did what I did. Um, oh. I, I heard Glenn Beck say, pack your crap and move to Texas, and that's what I did, you know. And I'm a lot safer here. You are? Uh, in Texas. Yeah, because when everything and goes you. down, you know, you want to be around like-minded people who are in Texas. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of Texans have a lot of guns, you know, and they're violent. You know, it's perfect people to be around when the shit hits the fan is, you know, violent thugs with guns. Yeah, man. Beyond yep. that, uh, before we close the northern border. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, when that, when that happens. When that happens. When, when Glenn orders the border closed. And then you're going to be sitting there wishing you'd listen to God, a.k.a. Glenn Beck. Scotty just thinks he can leave in the middle of a show. What the fuck I want, bitch? Damn. Fuck Scotty. It's a piece of That's shit. That's the way it goes down, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I must have forgot because we're not doing the show live. Um, we didn't talk about any of the shilling shit. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, true. I mean, the only thing... Well, we don't even know what we're shilling by this time this fucking episode. Well, up. I, the meetup, because the meetup will be in a few days from the All time right, well, this a, airs. A few days from now, there's going to be a meetup in New Orleans. Yes. Link in the description. Check it out. It's going to be on July fucking 30th. Yes. Come and see us. It's in there's New Orleans at the Napoleon House. Paul will be there. And, and ben debauchery. will be there. Scotty will be there. Cult of Dusty will be there. Pimp Monk will be there. Wow. Various other people will be there. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. 
God, I'm so fucking high right now. Ben's just <laughs> like, whoa, am I doing like a show or yeah. something? Yeah, well, it's crazy. <laughs> whoa, whoa. All right, uh, here's Donald Trump. You know, we're very proud of what we're doing, but places like Pennsylvania, where I'm doing really <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, God. Wisest like, old chimp at the zoo. <laughs> the patriarch of the chimp pack. They dress him up in a suit. Dude, he has. Dude, what the fuck is going he on? He not only looks like a chimp in the face, but his body. He is. His body is that of a chimp. I mean, just look at it. Dude, he is a fucking chimp. He has a chimp's musculature. Yeah. Look how he's sitting. What the fuck? Dude, he really is. I, I truly believe he is a fucking chimp. You know, we're up in Pennsylvania over her. Traditionally, Republicans don't do too well in Pennsylvania. That's right. That's right. One just came out in Connecticut, I hear, where I'm tied. And to tied. be tied in Connecticut, no Republican so would those, even go to Connecticut. Yeah. But so I one of those, like, Trimp orangutan forums, dude. It's awesome. I love Connecticut. I have so many friends in Connecticut. But this must be the easiest interview that Donald Trump ever has to fucking prepare for because he knows, like, there's not even, like, you don't even have to worry about softballs in this interview. He's just going to sit there and go, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. is it true you're the greatest candidate of all time? It is. It's like, okay. It they love uh, me. Yo, very proud. I love Jesus. This is a through the roof. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're going to do great in Connecticut. I think we're going to actually, Pat, do great in a lot of states that don't normally come into play for Republicans, too, in addition. Well, I think you play very well in New York, and that's never gone well, Republican. There's a shot there. You know, traditionally, nobody would make one speech. A traditional, no. like, <laughs> if, I, I won't use my yeah. opponent's names, but if you took one of the other 50... Okay, um... <laughs> Trump is not, I mean, like, he might do better than most in New York, but it's, New York is not going to go Republican, okay? You know, his love is like, I'm not, I'm not going to mention my opponent's name. There's, no one knows who Trump is going up right. against. New York is not going to go Republican. It will. No, it he's going to do very, Ben, he's going to do very, I'm going to do very well, though. New York's a red state. He's going to do very well. <laughs> Dude, I just I, I I just keep imagining like fucking Pat Robertson jumping up on the <laughs> on the chair, pulling his pants down, and he's got one of those big angry red baboon asses back there. One of those big like flabby, flared up, angry fucking <laughs> chimp ass. Oh my god. Shits into his hand, throws it at Trump. <laughs> yeah, I can see sixteen it. people. They would never go and campaign in New York because mm -hmm. they wouldn't have a chance. I think I have a good chance of winning New York. I mean, in the general, you'd win. In yeah. the general, yeah. yeah. Well, I did great in the primary, as you know. I won yeah, it I by a did. landslide. <laughs> yeah. But, and that's nice. You know, when the people that know you best, I also, I'm very well known in Florida, and I won Florida in a landslide by 21 points. When the people that know you best vote for you and strongly endorse you, because yeah, they really know me in New York, they know me in Florida, all the places where they know me, those are the places I really did the best. I mean, yes, you, you really love Mexicans, Hispanics. I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You love him. <laughs> that was great. This is like, this is like, this isn't even softball. This is like t-ball right here. Yeah. Like, well, you really love Hispanics, right? Who the fuck? That's like fucking Trump hiring a major league player to go hit the fucking ball for him off the tee. Yeah. You know, give me a break. Oh, talk to us about that because you're portrayed as a guy who hates uh, Mexicans, yeah. but you don't hate them. Well, the press is so dishonest, Pat, and I know you get your share of it too. Oh, do I? Ever? But the press is so totally dishonest. I can make a statement, and it's perfect, we and you would say, the... "What a nice statement." <laughs> It we came from the this. lips of Trump. It is I it know. is perfect. I make a statement I, and it's perfect. It's beautiful. It's perfect. And then the media twists it. <laughs> Fucking media. Trump, the media doesn't have to twist what you say. You just say really dumb shit all the time. It's not even difficult. Yeah. And to make and the next day you'll read about it and they totally cross it up and change it and I mean purely dishonest. <laughs> they know they're doing it too. Um, I have great relationships with Hispanics, with Mexicans. I have thousands of people working and have worked for me, thousands and thousands. And, you know, I don't know if you've seen, but the last poll came out, I was at 33%, which is six points above Romney, who frankly should have won four years ago oh, and yeah. something happened to him. But I was six points ahead with the Hispanics of, you know, of Romney. I think I'm... 
Wow, so he just said Romney should have won, but Romney can't stand Trump at all. Well, he's he, he's almost doing it as a dig at Romney. Like, yeah. Romney yeah. should have won that election, but he dropped the ball or whatever. Yeah, I mean, he did drop the ball by talking shit, so. Uh, Romney got caught on tape saying, right. like, yep, yeah, 50% of the country, fucking stupid asshole, leech, parasite, pieces of shit, fuck them. Don't, don't need them to vote for me. Don't Not need those all. fuckers. Fuck that fucking major voting block of people. They could suck my dick. I'm Romney, bitch. I'm rich. It's like, uh, okay. Well, you just lost the election. Have Fuck fun. those moochers. What a dumbass. Really well. People that are here legally don't want their jobs taken away mm -hmm. by people that cross over yeah. illegally. They don't want their houses taken away. They want to get good education. They want to be properly taken care of, and they want to work hard. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'm going to do very well with the Hispanics. Well, they're a big voting block when you look at Texas and Arizona and New Mexico and California. I mean, you've got a... Yeah, and like <laughs> Texas and California, two very highly populated states. Uh, so far, Trump is not doing well with the Hispanics. No. Right. He's doing extremely poorly with I the Hispanics. Know, I, I know, and that, that's going to fuck him over. Yeah, uh, he does actually need to make inroads there. For some reason, Trump is not really running much of a campaign at this time, so... Eh. <laughs> My money's won. I remember guy. the day after Romney lost to Obama, I turned on Sean Hannity to see what he was saying on the radio. Yeah. And he said, for the first time ever, he was totally on the opposite side of this issue, but for the first time ever, that day he was like, we need to start talking about immigration reform. Yeah. Yeah, like, he... he because he's just a shill, you know? So he's like, yeah, so now he has to play this other side of the issue. Well, Romney, he, Romney is one of the ones, actually, um, I've, I've heard anyway. I haven't seen confirmation of this, but I've heard it from a few different people that Romney is uh, trying to basically fund Gary Johnson's campaign. And Jesus. Try to fucking get Johnson up there and shit. I don't think he's actually trying to beat Trump with Johnson, but he's probably trying to make Trump lose. Well, by getting a bunch of conservatives to go to the libertarians. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. But um, I don't know if that's true or if that's just a conspiracy, but didn't really research it. But I have heard that, so take I that with don't a grain of salt. Have facts I don't have facts to back this yeah. up. You rarely do, TJ. All right. Uh, here's a story about something that kind of pisses me off because it happens all the time. Um, apparently, people keep dying from smoking the fake weed in states where weed is illegal mm, yeah. so they buy this legal shit assuming yeah, that it's spice. safer yeah that sort of shit mm. it goes by a few names here and there yeah, but people die from it it's made in like china and it's made out out of all kinds of crazy yeah, chemicals it's, it's sold as like potpourri yep after in other national news today it's a drug that you may have never heard of but it is raising serious safety concerns in communities across the nation take a look at this video just in showing a man high on synthetic Marijuana, according to law enforcement. Now, police say that this drug is partly responsible for a spike uh, in violent crime. Let's get right to CNN Justice reporter Evan Perez. Evan, tell us about this. What is it? Well, uh, New York Police Commissioner today at a press conference, uh, uh, Bill Bratton at a press conference today, called it weaponized marijuana, Jake. And it basically sold in, in convenience stores, gas okay. stations. Called so I guess why, okay. why would you call it weaponized marijuana? How about you just call it not marijuana? Yeah, it's yeah. not marijuana. It's, it's like, yeah. Why, yeah. Like, what? Quit, quit what? Tying this, this crazy shit to marijuana. Nobody, nobody's trying to jump the fence uh, with, with pepper spray in their eyes because they smoked a doobie. Uh. Dude, it's so ridiculous how they just still try to fucking shit on weed. It's like weaponized marijuana. They just said it was synthetic. Yeah, it's, it's not, not the, the real thing. Yeah, marijuana is not synthetic. And this is not, it's not even like when they say synthetic marijuana, it's not like, oh, we tried to make marijuana with chemicals. It's just like, no, they just mix some random shit together like this will get people fucked up. Yeah, the problem is with the fake shit. It's like, it's not like it's not like they're basically taking THC and or, like or, and making it. They're just fucking what they're doing is they're taking a bunch of chemicals and selling it as something. This is not to be used for human consumption. So really, it's not fit for fucking human consumption. It just points out well, the I mean, absolute like hypocrisy of of American drug laws. Shit that makes you fucking climb the fence. Naked, naked with pepper spray in your fucking face and fight three officers is totally legal to go by. But marijuana still fucking puts you in jail. Like, what? 
Where are the priorities? Cool, Scooby snacks, and it's a hallucinogenic, <laughs> hallucinogenic drug. That, uh, which marijuana is not. Also, isn't this news story just like an advertisement for this? Yeah, show? here it is. Yeah, this will get you fucked up, kids. Comes from China. You want to be as uh, fucked up as that guy we just showed? It doesn't even here look like weed. It doesn't even look oh. like weed. Mm, that looks I'll tell you what, I, I smoked this shit one time with somebody, and they're like, this is just like weed. What? They said it was just like weed? Yeah, they told me it was just, it, it is not. I fucking felt like terrible after. I was like, how the fuck can anyone smoke this shit? Here that show you what the, the, the surge of this problem in the last few months. The American Association of Poison Control Centers says that there have been 4,300 exposures. People, this is people suffering from the effects of synthetic pot uh, deaths only through July, the beginning of July compared to 3,600 in all of 2014, in all of last year. We also had some figures from the D.C. Fire EMS here in Washington. Uh, they said that they had uh, about 450 cases in June of 2015. That compares to about 50 in uh, 2015. I've got an idea. Let's legalize marijuana because no one dies from that. No one goes crazy from that. And make this shit illegal. Yeah. Because this shit's been legal for a long well, time. I mean, you don't even need to make this shit illegal because no one would want this shit if weed was just I mean, legal. I don't, I don't understand who would smoke this as a substitute for weed if it's like hallucinogenic and makes you sick. Weed is not hallucinogenic. Who, who, I mean, like, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. It's it'd, be, horrible. it'd be like if I wanted to drink, you know, a beer, but I ended up drinking, like, water instead. I'm getting something totally different than what I want. It's more like drinking paint thinner instead. Well, like, this will fuck me up. Yeah, it'll fuck you up. Our drug, our drug laws make literally zero sense. That, this is what that, that's really ultimately what it amounts to. I mean, isn't, like, weed a Schedule 1 narcotic, which means, like, it's the most dangerous kind, and yet this probably isn't. Well, this ain't shit. Though. You know what I'm saying? This is basically Stores just legal. This shit. You know, that's what I'm saying. This doesn't even fucking register to people. Like, I guess it does now, but it's kind of like, oh, well, you, know, you know, honestly, they, they'll just change the chemical composition in China, so it'll perpetually be legal, but let's not sell weed legally when people already want it and would gladly use it over this shit. Yeah, they'll just outlaw this shit, and then China and Japan and wherever else is fucking importing this shit will just come up with some new shit that doesn't fucking break the law. It's probably just as bad. Yep. They, oh, they've done it continuously. And who cares? I want to climb fences weed. naked. It looks well, like fun. There you go, man. Yeah, I want to tear away boards from a fence with my bare hands and then naked wrestle fucking three <laughs> cops with mace in my eyes. <laughs> Sounds, Sounds like, a, like a fucking awesome time. Yeah. Now, if I'm watching that happen, that's awesome. But I don't really want to be a participant. No. Are you a terrible cook? I know I am, but with Blue Apron, I can make home-cooked meals with fresh ingredients for my entire household that turn out restaurant quality. Blue Apron is partnered with 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. And because Blue Apron never sends you more than you need for a recipe, there's no food waste. And all Blue Apron meals cost under $10 a meal per person for delicious, healthy meals like crispy cod and cabbage slaw tacos with pepita, pineapple, and avocado salsa, or Middle Eastern chicken and chickpea stew with pita croutons. Now, I never thought in a million years I could cook stuff like that. But with Blue Apron, it's not only possible, it's easy. So please, check out this week's menu and get your two meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com forward slash peasants. I mean, that's free food, you guys, just because Blue Apron wants you to see for yourself just how good their food is. And I know that you're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com forward slash peasants. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right, we're back. And it's time to move on to crazy people. Ah. Paul sucks. Oh. Fucking man. Hasn't done Fucking the no true man. Scotsman. Hasn't done the living man. Yeah, I know. Hasn't done a yeah. single voice. What about what about story time with Paul? What the fuck? How long has that been? Yeah. It's been a while. Paul sucks. Yeah. Boo Paul. Boo. Paul. Hashtag Boo Paul. Boo. 
Ooh. Paul's hashtag his send Paul dicks. <laughs> send Paul Hash, pa- hashtag free Paul's ass or whatever we said earlier. Hashtag Paul sucks. Several hashtags. Yeah, we don't play any living man videos. That's why we haven't played any living man. Well, he's boring. Well, that not that kind of the point. Yeah. Hello there, hello there, hello there. Welcome, one and all. <laughs> oh, this is unwatchable. Well. That's terrible. I've seen this. Yeah, this I've seen some of it anyway. To, uh, so you don't want to watch it? No, no, we can, we can watch it. Okay. Whatever. We can watch a little bit anyway. Video called by the amazing actress <laughs> featuring many of his uh, anti-feminist friends. Yeah, what a great photo. Oh, I, hear it, I hear his own game. shit echoing back. Fucking time, because I'm an idiot. Yeah, you are an idiot. Yep. <sighs> okay, anyway, why do you record all your shit on Google Hangouts? Um, I mean, like, it. that's not what Google Hangouts is fucking for, for you to record a 20-minute video. I mean, like, are you that fucking inept? Buy a fucking Logitech webcam. It comes with software where you can record videos and fucking upload them your fucking self, all right? Buy a fucking video editor. Buy a decent fucking microphone, okay? Like, this is shit. Like, who the fuck wants to listen to this fucking half-assed garbage? Uh, yes, I have a, uh, uh, a tick ambulance with the uh, amazing atheist on a small point. Like, who's gonna fucking sit and listen to that for 20 fucking minutes? Nobody. Yeah, no one except us. He's put up a video entitled, uh, Questions White Men Have for SJWs. Only joking, SJWs. Uh-huh. <laughs> most most funny. Ha. Huh. You are funny. SJ double Jews. Jews. I don't get it actually, but I get it. I guess I don't know. It is joke funny. I laugh. Cuz double use use sounds like Jews. Ha. Huh. Oh, just get it on, TJ. Just get on with it. Oh. More like S gay double use. Get it? Haha, <laughs> little joke, you guys. Yeah. Little joke. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, whilst I don't actually consider myself to be an SJW by any real measure, because you are... frankly that term has no fucking meaning anymore. Yeah, uh, uh, you are an SJW. It's not something people self-identify as because it's disparaging, but you are. <clears throat> so, just put that out there. And arguably it never really did, it's just a fucking smear. I've been asked by literally a fucking literally trillion people. A literally. trillion. Like, He's been literally asked by more people than exist on the planet. That's crazy. It's impressive. It is impressive. Oh, about a dozen people. Uh, to do a response to this, so I'm mm. going to um, I'm gonna do that, basically. I'm yeah. gonna basically. Who the fuck asked you to do uh, any videos? Uh, you suck. With the caveat that I'm only really speaking for me. Although yep. I will We're suffering be from the old explain uh, what the video what is the gonna be before the video syndrome. Really Shocking. But anyway. Mm. Enough of that fucking shit. Let's just uh yeah. this yeah. Yes. I guess do a screen share where are we? Don't where screen are. share with what? What? <laughs> How do you not know how to do this? Is that, is that working there? You do all of your videos on Google Hangouts. How is this still difficult to figure the fuck out? Oh my god, you suck. Breathtaking. Nah, man. New video. Who the fuck would watch this? Yeah, this is unwatchable. Who the fuck would watch this? I mean, it's it's not even well made. It's not even well presented. He's not even, like, actually really attacking you. It's like, he's just, like, getting into bullshit. Like, oh, I gotta fiddle with this fucking setting real quick. We almost don't have, uh, we almost can't do anything else. We have to at least watch some of this because there's, like, we don't have enough videos to fill out the rest Uh, of the time. Alright. Oh, man. This is really bad, though. Don't worry. He'll, he'll I'll get skip to ahead. Oh. Yeah, maybe skip ahead a little bit. Oh, yeah. Because... Islam probably is the most, most uh, nakedly misogynistic <laughs> uh, um, ideology. And, uh, How does this guy even I begin to try to make YouTube videos? I don't know. I don't know. Never uh, mind. Never mind. This is not watchable. It's okay. We can This is time. unusable, horrible, wretched... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Unbelievably bad <laughs> video. Yeah, I mean, at least before, he, there was something there we could criticize. Yeah, but... this lemon is fucking squeezed yep. to the rind. All right, next part. Uh... Dude, you're trash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, here's a Prager University video. Okay. 97% of climate scientists agree 
that climate change is real. They're wrong. How many times have you heard that statement? Probably hundreds. Okay. It may seem like a compelling and scientific argument against fossil fuels, but it's one of the most illogical, unscientific arguments you can make. Wow. To see how, <coughs> let's Amazing. use this form of argument for another controversial product, vaccines. Um. <sighs> An anti-vaccine person approaches you and says, 97% of doctors say that the side effects of vaccines are real. What would you say in response? You'd probably say, yeah, but the benefits far outweigh the side effects. Yeah. By saying that 97% of doctors agree that vaccine side effects are real without mentioning any of the benefits of vaccines, the anti-vaccine activist is trying to get you to oh. look at the potential dangers of vaccines. So I guess we're not looking at the upside of global warming as the problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. Milder winters, uh, you know, new beachfront property also, for people. It, it, the South you know, will be underwater, so... Yeah, he's also arguing with the benefits we get from fossil fuels as well, I'm sure is what he's going to say. Like, oh, we, use, we, we need it for cars, we need it for transportation, we need it for energy. I mean, look, we can't just get rid of this stuff overnight. He doesn't want to get rid of it at all. Well, I, you know, obviously not. He probably think. Uh, well, let's see where he stands. Seems I know where out he stands. of context. When fossil fuel opponents say 97% of climate scientists agree that climate change is real, they are doing the same. Yes using fossil fuels for energy has a side effect, increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Okay, but what about the upside? In the case of fossil fuel, that upside is enormous. The cheap, plentiful, and reliable energy that makes modern life possible, and at a scale no other energy source can match. Okay. So how? Um, no, that's dumb. You're short-sighted. Um, yeah, maybe maybe in, in current the current time frame, yeah, nothing can match oil. But that's because we that that's a resource we've chosen to pursue, and there's so many different ways to get it and extract it, and that's really what we're dependent upon. But there's no reason we can't shift that dependence to something else that's more sustainable. I mean, uh, I don't think you can say that. The, the what we think will happen, you know, as the climate undergoes change is like, oh, it's totally because fossil fuel makes life easier. It's like, yeah. so that's worth toxic oceans and the sea level rising and like total fucking ecological collapse of a shit ton of ecosystems around the world when they're suddenly like, when suddenly the climate of their fucking, like species are adapted to certain fucking climates, you know, when you fucking throw that out of alignment, you know, the, there's mass die-offs of species. You have, like, giant extinction events. They've happened plenty of times in the Earth's past. Yeah, during cataclysmic changes. Yeah, and, you know, why would we want to knowingly instigate that to happen? Just so we, well, you know, life more convenient. It's like, yeah, well, is life going to be more convenient when you're under fucking water, you stupid piece of shit? I mean, I, I don't disagree with this guy's premise that it's cheap and relatively and, and plentiful now, although it is a finite resource, so eventually we're going to have to move to something else. Why can't we look at alternatives to it? Why wouldn't we, in fact? Yeah, it's cheap, it's plentiful, it's widespread, it powers our society, but it's also killing the planet. So why wouldn't we be looking at alternatives to it? Like, that's what people, when they bring up 97% of climate uh, scientists agree that climate change is real, they're trying to get people to look at alternatives to oil, yeah. which is what you don't want us to do for some reason. Project Significant as a side Mobile. effect? This raises another problem with the statement, 97% of climate scientists agree that climate change is real. It tells us nothing about the meaning or magnitude of climate change whether it's a mild manageable warming or a runaway catastrophic warming. This is an example of the fallacy of equivocation, using the same term in different contradictory ways. That's if someone were to say no, 97% of- That's not equivocation. That's, when someone brings that up, they're, what they're saying is, is that they, in their view, the science is kind of decidedly on the, in, in favor of this is an event that is occurring, and many people have studied this issue and come to the same conclusion. So to say that that really is just equivocation and really doesn't really mean, it doesn't really mean anything and it doesn't really settle the argument. Yeah, sure, that one fact does not settle the argument, but a lot of people deny that it's actually it actually occurs. Not in the scientific community, but just lay people, like you know, people like us. We like we're like, no, I don't think it's occurring. I do think it's occurring. That's what that is meant to demonstrate. Is most of the experts studying this agree that it is occurring. 
They're just doing it to get more government money. Doctors agree that vaccine side effects are real. What exact vaccine side effects do the doctors agree on? That a certain number of babies will get a rash? Or that large percentages will get full-blown autism? Precision is that is the key, autistic kid? Right? <laughs> he but rocks back and forth like me. Don't Weird. Want you to know the precise <laughs> magnitude of climate change. Because if you did, you wouldn't be scared of climate change. You would be scared of losing the benefits of fossil fuels. Oh my For God! Example, no, no. What are you? What are you talking about? You blithering idiot! Jesus! No, you're wrong. I'm. I'm. I know what the benefits of fossil fuels are, and I'm. Yeah. You know, I don't want to lose the benefits <laughs> of fossil fuels, but I would like to transition to something else. And I know that maybe it's not going to be as easy or feasible, but I think it's kind of worth it to evade climate disaster. I mean, we could at least, you know, push harder for it, you know, rather than not even expanding it at all. Um, you we, know, don't, over we don't do that because people like this convince dummies that there's nothing to be afraid of when it comes right. to massive fucking climate change. No, man, it would, maybe because they won't see it in their lifetime. Like, that's how short-sighted people are. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it, it, yeah eventually it's going to be a bad thing, but I'm going to be long gone, so fuck it. <laughs> Listen yep. to how Secretary of State John Kerry manipulates the 97% of scientists' line. 97% of climate scientists have confirmed that climate change is happening and that human activity is responsible, he said in a speech in Indonesia <laughs> in 2014. Uh, yeah. Later, I really see zero problem with that statement. You know John Kerry, though, he's a flip flopper, man. He, he was. He's a flip flopper. He was flipping and a flopping. Flipping and a flopping. In the same speech, he claimed that scientists agree that the world as we know it will change, and it will change dramatically for the worse. Yep. 97% of climate scientists never said any such thing. So, what did the 97% actually say? It turns out nothing remotely resembling catastrophic climate change. One of the main studies justifying 97% was done by John Cook, a climate communications fellow for the Global Change Institute in Australia. Mm -hmm. Here's his own summary of his survey. Cook et al. found that over 97% of papers surveyed endorsed the view that the Earth is warming up and human emissions of greenhouse gases are the main cause. Main cause means over 50%. But the vast majority of papers don't say that human beings are the main cause of recent warming. In fact, one analysis showed that less than 2% of papers actually said that. Hmm. How did Cook get to 90%? The Heritage Foundation or... You know, I, I mean, I'm sorry, but I can't really trust anything that I hear on Prague University. I mean, I'm not saying that they're lying. They are lying. But... I'm, well, I, I, I can say they're lying. <laughs> well, they're fucking lying. I, I, I like to have solid evidence in anything I say as far as that's concerned, but I don't really believe that this is a factual representation of what the climate community thinks. Yeah, are there people that argue about it? Yeah, I've definitely seen people that are like, I'm a meteorologist or I'm a client ex uh, you know, scientist, and I don't think it's happening. But they're few and far between. I've, I've heard people like, oh, it's just, it is happening, but it's not because of emissions. It's because of uh, sunspots or some stupid shit. Solar radiation, solar flare activity, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've heard a bunch of different fucking explanations why. And uh, but, you know, the vast majority pretty much agree. It is fucking CO2 emissions from human beings. But not, but not only and that... it is going to have disastrous results. Yeah, but not, not only that... Fucking, just like, oh, it's a little warmer. Ooh. Yeah, if it was a mild inconvenience, why would any scientist waste the time trying to have public outreach if it was like, well, it's going to be one degree warmer and it's not going to really affect hardly anyone or anything? I mean, like, even... One of the things I always do when I'm arguing with climate deniers is I talk about, like, tr transitioning to non-fossil fuel alternatives. Like, what's the downside to doing that even if climate change isn't caused by it? It's a finite resource. It's filthy as fuck. It makes the air smoggy and unbreathable. It's dirty. Um, it, it causes huge calamities when accidents happen when we're drilling for it out in the oceans. Like, why wouldn't, like, even if climate change is out of the picture, why wouldn't we want to look at because, replacing uh, because a bunch fossil of big fuel? Business, a bunch of big businesses don't want that to happen. Oil and companies, which, well, yeah, which are lobbyists, you know, and, and a lot of corporations are just built around the use of fossil fuel. So to them, it's just like, if we change this, it's going to be real expensive to us, like trillions of dollars. They don't yeah. want to pay that cost.
and that's and that's why this video is being made. This video is Seven. not being made to better inform people about climate change. It's being made to push an agenda that's going to benefit oil companies. That's it. Listen to this faggot ass hippie in here. <laughs> Go hug a tree, Paul. Yeah, whatever. Go hug a tree. Yeah. Communism. Percent then? First, he added papers that explicitly said there was man-made warming, but didn't say how much. Then he mm. added papers that didn't even say there was man-made warming, but he thought it was implied. A scientific researcher has a sacred obligation to accurately report his findings. Mm -hmm. Cook and researchers like him have failed us, as have the politicians and media figures who have blindly... You know, he's not the only one who has conducted uh, studies of this nature, right? You know, like, his studies have been corroborated by others who have done similar studies. Yep. Doesn't nope. really... Doesn't, nope. doesn't matter, TJ. Doesn't matter. Scientists have failed us, TJ, but you know who <laughs> never done failed us? Exxon Mobil, man. They've been standing True. strong for the, for the working man forever, man. Exxon Mobil. You know, Paul, when you turn on your, your stove, man, that's Exxon Mobil power, man. It's that natural sure gas is. you depend on, dude. You know, you depend on that fossil fuels, Paul. If you didn't have that, nope. Paul, would you be able to drive a car? No, you wouldn't. Nope. Nope. Exxon. He repeated the 97% claim to support their <coughs> anti-fossil fuel goals. How can we protect ourselves against this kind of regulation? Right. So let me just ask you a question. They just have these anti-fossil fuel goals. Um, why? They just don't like it, TJ. They yeah, they like, like it. They just have like, a seriously, if, if there's no, if there's really no problem with fossil fuels, why are all these people just like, we got to get rid of these fossil fuels? We just, you know, we just don't like them. Those damn liberals. Liberals Those damn just liberals. fucking got it in their fucking dumb liberal heads. Like, man, I don't like this. Got to get rid of it. It's like, it's not a good, it's, it's not efficient, all right? They hate the free market, you know. Oh, yeah. They're like, ugh, the free market wants oil, therefore I want everything to be powered by lima beans. <laughs> yeah. That's my pie-in-the-sky liberal solution, lima bean power. Whenever someone tells you that scientists agree on something, ask two questions. What exactly do they agree on? And how did they prove it? I'm Alex Epstein, author of The Moral Case uh, for Fossil Fuels for Prager University. All right, I'll tell you what, since you're so smart, you know what's what, why don't you actually have a, why don't you have a debate with a climate scientist then? Yep. Like, why don't you debate Bill Nye or someone like that? I mean, he's not a climate scientist, but that's one of his pet issues. Or you can have debate someone who actually is a climate scientist. I don't give a shit. Debate anybody who actually understands the issue scientifically, and I guarantee they'll wipe the floor with your fucking smug face, bitch. Fuck you, Prager University. You're uh, part of the reason that this species is fucking going to hell in a handbasket. Suck a dick and choke on it. The end. It's not really a big deal, though, uh, TJ. Yeah. Not a big deal. Yeah. Come on, TJ. It's not that big of a deal. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm all fine with it. All right. Uh, this video, what it's like to be a male feminist. Ugh. So, guys, I have found you. A unicorn. A unicorn. This is a straight white male that gets it. Okay, uh, did you see the look on his face? Yeah. Mm. He's God. like, I'm fabulous. Please kill me. Please. Skip through this terrible music. What the fuck? It's like I've written a book called Man Up. <laughs> it's true. Chowing down with Man Up. Um, surviving a modern masculinity. And I have read this. And I'll be honest, I was ready to be like, mm, it's 80 percent mm, there might be some... And then literally everything in it, I was like, I agree, you get it, you've included. And what I would say is the best thing, before I start asking you stupid questions, I'm just going to say the best thing about this book isn't that there is a chapter at the beginning that's like, I know this happens to women's too, and like you don't need to call me out for it because I already know, blah blah, now let's proceed with ten chapters about men. You literally weave feminism the whole way through <clears throat> it, you're always, in every paragraph, you're like, and this is probably how women experience it, and that's probably a little bit worse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at TJ's face. Just can we? Can I just die right now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Just he weaves. Yeah. Scotty, will you? Just, I can't. Right. I cannot self terminate. You gotta. I'm gonna turn up the speed. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Did that's accurate? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, so I think you haven't just like shoved it away in a chapter and then been like, and oh, now we will proceed with my problems. No, I mean, it's, uh, it's something that it, it's very important in the grand scheme of things. And um, 
I don't think I could have written this book without feminism. Uh, and I kind of feel a bit guilty for you know all the attention this book is getting. Everyone's saying like, this is a brave, brilliant thing because uh, for the most part, these ideas aren't that original. They a lot of them have been touched upon before, but by women. So now everyone's saying like, oh, this man has written a book about being a man. Like, yeah, <laughs> but, like, like, the women were saying yeah, it. Yeah, they did before. So I, I I feel like I kind of owe it to them to at least admit that. So tell me how you came writing this book. What happened? Uh, story. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I wanted to write a book where I subverted my own opinions to the ideology of a bunch of crazy fucking women so that they would buy my book and bring me on their show and lambaste me with praise about how I get it. That's why you wrote the fucking book. Yeah. I understand that as a straight white male, I am a detestable subhuman piece of shit. Wow. We love you. He really gets it. Every problem like facing the modern man should be looked through through the lens of problems <laughs> of women, how they're worse. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mm. get it. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is another big, <laughs> this, this a my, big moment in my life. favorite subheading in a chapter is so yeah my, so, my, so yeah my dad died and that was shit. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so my dad died uh, just before I turned ten. Um, suddenly had a heart attack. Uh, you know, it was complete shock, but. We got the results of the post-mortem back, um, which showed scar tissue on his heart that indicated a previous heart attack. And then a little while later, uh, we found over-the-counter angina medication in one of his jacket pockets. So it was clear that he knew he was having problems with his heart. He was obviously in a lot of pain, but it never occurred to him to go to a doctor or to talk to his wife about it. Mm. Um, and so that kind of, you know, I didn't, I didn't really come to that realization until a few years later when I was going through a period of depression. Um, and it kind of struck me that... As men, we are absolutely terrible at talking about these things. And in the case of my father, in the case of a lot of men, it's literally killing us. So I, I kind of wanted to look into the causes of this, um, you know, why we're so bad at something. Didn't, that didn't so listen to women. I, uh, I mean, come on. You know, now uh, he's essentially boiling this down to, you know, hey, my dad, all these men just trying to be tough, masculine guys. But if they'd actually just talked and been sensitive and talked to a woman about this and looked at it from a woman's perspective, he'd probably still be alive or he'd be a lot better off. Uh, he wouldn't be better off because he would have seen his son grow up into this. <laughs> <laughs> the simpering fucking mangina of a man desperately looking for fucking attention. In uh, the book, you kind of take it one step further and say, my father was killed by masculinity. Would you say that yeah. kind of, which is a really like, interesting his, job to make? Yeah, his dad happy. was killed personally, by masculinity. Personally, I think it was the heart attack, but you know, yeah. I guess it could have no, been masculinity. I guess it could have been masculinity what done it. Killed by masculinity. It's like a, a watch too much DBZ or fucking something. Well, although for me, it was like shocking to read because I was like, oh, can we say that? Yeah, I guess well, I mean, we can. It, because so much of this emotional repression comes from this idea that men need to be strong, and we have this idea of the strong, silent type of male. Um, and it, clearly, it's not a strength, it's a weakness. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I do believe that had he been a bit more emotionally available and you know, bothered to go to a doctor a couple of times in his life, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to say. You can't, you know, I can't say definitely that he would still be alive, but I think he would have stood a chance at at least getting a few more years. Yeah. This so characterization of true. like um, male stoicism as always bad is so fucking stupid. It is. Like it. Like look. Yeah. Should guys be more open and talk about their emotions? Sure. But when the shit goes down, you don't want a man blubbering. You don't want yeah. a man that fucking faces uh, every every challenge by running away from it and hiding and, and being scared and crying. Like, there are plenty of examples oh. throughout history and modern examples where this type of, of male trait is a positive thing. Look, and like, continues uh, to be. We have to ignore the evolutionary and biological reasons, Paul. Look, these people, these two smug assholes sitting here, they've just figured it out. It's toxic masculinity. Masculinity literally kills people every day, Paul. Look, the stoicism associated with uh, masculinity, the strong, silent type shit, I mean, like, yeah, it has its pros. It has its cons. So does fucking femininity. So does every fucking mindset or attitude that you could possibly adopt. Not every fucking ad like, There's always going to be strengths and weaknesses of every fucking person in their character. And you can't just fucking reduce it down to like, that's just some male bullshit. It's like, fuck you. There's fucking... There's women who wouldn't fucking talk about it, too, because they're that fucking type of person. This is just their fucking warped interpretation and confirmation bias just coming to light. Like, they think this is, like, the ill that, of, uh, you know, the, of the world, so anything they just see it anywhere. Oh, my dad died. It's because of his masculinity that yielded him, because I would have <laughs> talked to someone, and I probably would have had at least had a better chance. Give me a break. You needed, um, like, you're trying to talk about the rights of men, and you're quite an active person. Does that make you <laughs> part of the MRA? Absolutely not. <laughs> like, uh, no? <laughs> it's such Is a that difficult... something you've been accused of? No, actually, I, I, I was kind of anticipating that when I wrote the initial Vice article, um, 
because it, it is a difficult subject to discuss because so many of the people who are you know having this conversation are of this awful MRA breed. Um, breed. But... <laughs> Interesting Nazi word. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, it doesn't apply to feminism. Had, after that article, I had feminists praising it. You know, they were probably the biggest supporters of it. But there were also men from these deep dark corners of the internet who were saying, like, this is proof that you know men have problems too. But then, of course, they went on to blame it on feminism, uh, which is not Jason the Lamb, intention. Okay. I'm guessing the book was an pause, hour pause this. Pause this. What what is this thing where if guys want to talk about male issues, they're just these basement dwellers, like weird people, like they're just a bunch of psychopaths. But if someone wants to dedicate their life to talking about feminism, it's just perfectly acceptable with them. Like, oh, you want this? You your one. Your one trick pony only wants to talk about women's issues. That's fine. You're just a normal person. But every guy is just like these weirdos on the internet. Just like, you know, I'm advocating. I think some there, there's ills in society for males, too. And it's like, no, you're not allowed to have that opinion. You're just some weird, crazy motherfucker that, you know, was a MGTOW where you just want to have sex with the fucking blow up doll. What's well, wrong with you? You're MGTOW. Yeah. MGTOW. But I'm like, you know that thing that you thought was about this? Jokes, sorry about this. Um, yeah, it's a very difficult thing because I. I some of the points that MRAs make um, are, are perfectly legitimate. You know, they they will talk about uh, problems facing men, such as the gender disparity and suicide rates. You know, men take their lives at three to four times the rate of women, which is absolutely wild, and you know that's clearly a massive problem. But they I'm don't really seem concerned about doing anything to fix this. They just uh, you know say this, this is a problem of feminism. Um, this is the fault yeah. of women, and they're kind of pitching us against one another rather than uh, you know, encouraging. I've us never, to I don't know. I've what? never heard a single. I mean, I've I've I go to MRA forums and I keep track of what those people are saying. But I've never seen any of them say, like, the reason men commit suicide at a higher rate is because of feminism. No. Like, what are you fucking talking about? What, what, what would the correlation between those two things be? I've never seen anyone draw that fucking conclusion. No. Show me, show me someone who has. I mean, maybe there's someone out there, but I ain't never seen it. Yeah, That's ridiculous. It's, it's it's certainly not a mainstream idea in in MRA, you know, circles that no. feminism is the cause of the male suicide rate. So where is he pulling this information from his ass? And of course, you have to remember too, all their opponents are just MRAs. It's like how they're framing, oh, there's people that don't agree with this. They're a bunch of like crazy idiots that have no lives. Be better humanity for us all. Because I feel like three out of four deaths like aren't caused by women killing men. No. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just like, I think you misunderstood the stats there, guys. Well, the That's a straw man. This. That's all uh, it is. No one's saying that. Straw man defeated. You know, I, I understand the, the point they are trying to make, but I just don't think there is any logic in saying, like, oh, this is the fault of feminism. It's, it's these women who just. No one's saying lives. that. De right. Demonstrate someone saying that. I feel like you're in, like, no man's land. They actually talk to you. It's, uh, I've had a few encounters. I mostly try to. See, this guy figured out the key to the door. It's, <laughs> it's constantly uh, painting uh, women as victims. Oh, yeah. Victims of, of something. Like, like, why would you have to fabricate a claim like MRAs are blaming feminism for male suicide rates? Other than to make, other than to make peace with the fucking feminists you're trying to get your foot in the door with. And go, yeah, man, it's because of feminism. They, they say it's because of feminism. You guys are under attack. Once again, these MRAs are victimizing you for pointing out like disparities in the fucking genders. It this doesn't make is, sense. Dude, this guy has white knight written all over him, man. I'm 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 one of the guys I'm one of those straight white males that gets it, you know? I mean this is so transparent. Terrible. For the most part because I I disagree with what they stand for. And I think um you know like I say they do make oh. some interesting points, but I think they're making these points for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Um and I think for the most part they're actually damaging men. Um it, Probably damage themselves as well. Yeah. That's why I try not to be too hard on them. I think you need a hug, mate. You know, obviously, I'm, I'm very supportive of anything that saves lives or just, you know, gets men away from these toxic ideas of masculinity. But I don't believe they're doing that. In fact, I think they are sort of delegitimizing uh, the points that people like me are trying to make and turning people who would be supporters, turning you know, feminists against uh, against the issues faced by men. Uh, so it's. Uh. Yeah, it's it, the reason that feminists aren't more receptive to men's issues is because these horrible fucking MRAs just turn them against it. That makes sense yep. to me. Any feminist I've ever heard talk about him just dismiss men, men's issues like, who cares? That's not even really an issue. That's not even really a problem. Like, what are you even bringing that up for? Or they blame, or they find a way to blame men for their own problems. Yeah. Women aren't responsible for any of their own problems, no. but men are totally responsible, not only for their own problems, but for all the problems of women. Yeah, let's not forget that women make up over half the population, but somehow, like, they're just innocent victims at every turn. They don't ever start anything themselves. They never cause any of their own problems. It's all just due to men. I went yep. to the fridge to get a yogurt, and there were no yogurts. White men. <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus. All of, our, all of your problems are us. 
all of your problems are us. It's just not helpful. And all of our us. problems I've written are my us. phone. I've written my phone. I've asked you. And very tired, Lena wrote, Lad Bible. Healthy humor to laugh off seeing of masculine oppression or sign of the apocalypse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, you're so uh, oppressed. I mean, you're literally make, uh, you, you literally make these videos. You live your life. You you pretty much probably don't really face any serious real oppression. But you're sitting here saying, oh, oppression. If you were really oppressed, would you be able to just laugh about it? If you were really under this grip of just like a, a total oppressive atmosphere where it's like feminism just wasn't allowed. You're not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to speak about it. You would make this jovial video with this guy. Oh, being oppressed you're not being oppressed you know you're not being oppressed shut up scotty fucking cishet fucking oppressive shit lord yeah um, all right we're gonna move on um next video here this is a video that someone recorded it's not the greatest recording but we'll get the gist of it it's tommy sotomayor finally admits what he did with the fatherless america money huh because he had a a charity <laughs> Uh, called yeah. Fatherless America. A charity. Yep. Charity, yeah. Yeah. So here it is. Wasn't, wasn't it a anyway, let me go back to the phone lines. Um, got a couple New York numbers here. You guys, I need you guys to be quick because I'm, I'm trying to bring everybody in. So y'all can't let me keep saying I'm trying to bring everybody in. Then when I bring y'all in, y'all talk for a long time. Please be quick. I'm going to start with these unknown numbers. Let's see what they do. What's going on, unknown number? Who's this? <laughs> Hello? Hey, who am I speaking with? What's going on? It's Black Queen. What's up, Black Queen talk? <laughs> Black huh? Queen. What's going on? Black Queen. Hell yeah. Talk to me. What's on your mind? Nothing much. I thought we was cool until you tried to go off on me because I asked about your movie. Well, when was this? Last night, you know. It's subtle politics, you know. Okay, why were you asking about my movie and soul politics? Because I want to know when the movie's coming out. Is that how you asked it? Like, okay, but I'm saying, when we're doing politics, why would you just put in there, when's the movie coming out? Oh my God, come on, You know Tommy. this is something that people are being irritating about, and I'm trying not to hear it. I'm trying not to be accountable for this. Come on now. I know he's like <laughs> he's, he's so blatantly run away from any accountability on what he's done. Just like, well, what are we talking about politics right now? It's like, okay, if you were doing it, you could just be like, it's coming out in a year. See, what happened was it was a coalition of white men and black women who done stole all the money for that. Okay, look, the angry video game nerd raised a bunch of money for a movie, and it took like, you know, what was about two or three years for it to come out. No one was sitting there saying, like, they expected the movie to come out, and he made the movie. Tommy could still could have made a piece of shit movie or whatever. He's fucking dumb. He still could have pocketed most of the money. He could have made a total shit movie and be like, there's the movie. Uh, because, hold on, because... If I have already told people that I'm still doing something, why are they still asking me about it? Uh, it's if been you three tell years. your kids, it's like having somebody say, are we there anyone. yet? Are we there yet when you're driving? So wait, he raised $100,000 for this movie? I guess so. Apparently, Damn. Three years ago. Three years ago. I mean, dude, come on. Listen, yes, you keep stopping everywhere. You keep talking about seeing your brown tooth and everybody else. This is slow, fat, but you ain't talking about no fatherless America. Uh, I was on an interview. I was on an interview with Tommy Lauren talking about it. I'm sorry. When? I was on my show talking about when the next time I was where I was going to be talking about and then it. You say you don't ask for donations and at 12:39 Eastern time. You said why ain't all the people in the live chat making donations instead of talking? Well, wait a minute. You talking about tonight? You talking about tonight? Yeah. Well, yeah. I said it because I said if you're going to try to tell me how to run my show, then that's probably the best way to do it. Huh? <laughs> No. I'm talking about my show. Hold on. I'm talking about my show, not a fucking movie. Be, be correct. I'm God. talking about my show. A show which I received donations for before the movie. Let's be correct. Why are you getting mad? I'm not getting mad. You're trying. Listen, if you're going to troll me, I don't like sarcastic what? people. Oh, whatever, Tom. You're not being fucking trolled. You're being confronted. And now you're just trying to slip away from the fucking conversation any way you can. Just like when TJ wanted to debate you, you were all full of bravado. And yeah, you want to do it. Let's go. Let's go. And it's like, okay, I'm here. Then you're just like, oh, I ain't got time right now, actually. You're a coward and you run away from every fucking fight. Just be honest, dude. If you ask a real question, I will answer a real question. What happened to your money, you dumbass? You're not listening to the answer. You know for a fucking fact that I didn't tell people to donate to my movie. Why are you... 
Hold on. No, 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 no. Don't tell me why I'm cussing when you've been listening to the... Hold on, dear. You've been listening to my show all night. Have I not been cussing before? No. So? Whoa, did you just say so? Did you just say so? Just so I can make sure. You just said so? Get the fuck off my line, you nasty oh, black dude, whore. Oh, dude, Tommy, this is your plan all along. Come on. You nasty black whore. You said Jesus. so. So! You <laughs> gone! <laughs> <laughs> this, I mean, this, how pathetic can you be, Tommy? I, w I would have more respect for Tommy if he's just like, I don't know what happened in the movie. You got all that money. I don't know. You know, haha, <laughs> like, you know, I blew it. You know, at least it could be like, okay, at least we know what he did with the money. Or like, you know, big titted bitches at the strip club. You know, like, okay, Tommy. Nasty black whore. Most black women, because they're stupid motherfuckers. You can't hold conversations with them jackasses, and they get a, they have a fucking. Great man, <laughs> causing drama. It's Black Queen. Why would you? You got a hundred thousand dollars. Look at your reaction, you psychopath. Bitch, yeah, it was her that was crazy and acting fucking a fool and shit. Yeah, Not you. Uh, she seemed calm and was just like, what'd you do with the money? And then you're just fucking flipping out and like you literally hung up because she said so to your fucking ridiculous responses. I think he's just oh, now... Really? He just now admitted what he did with the money. He just said he paid his child support with it. Like, right as we pause it. Okay. You were asking for donations tonight. Bitch, I paid my child support with it. Bitch, I paid my child support with it. Bitch, I paid my child support with it. Well, there you go. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, out oh, of the horse's damn. ass. Out of the horse's ass. Yeah, he fucking, you know, he said it. I mean, maybe in a moment of anger, he's like, yep, I'm just, I, I, I was back on my child support. He probably did, I wouldn't be surprised if he did owe a bunch of back child support and just, you know, got like, like you know, obviously he wants money for himself. He's, you know, he's 20 grand behind or something, face in jail, like, man, I need to make a movie. I mean, look, he's, he's done it before. Like, with us, he did the legal defense fund. Like, he's like... It's, just, it's funny, though. He was making a movie, uh, The Fatherless America. We need to figure out how to about, get like, fans dead as dads and shit. His, that'll just give us money all the but time. But he was raising money to make a movie about deadbeat dads. I know. And he used it to pay his back child support. Yep. It's astonishing. I mean, it really is. Like, it, you can tell that's what Tommy does. I mean, that's why he DMCA does. That's, it's, just, it's really just a scam for him to get money. Because he knew we'd probably get pissed and say, oh, we'll sue you or something. And, you know, of course, then he just gets to go, oh, I'm going to be sued. These crazy white boys are going to sue me. You know, please contribute to my GoFundMe to so you can, you know, fucking basically fund my lifestyle for another few months until I'm back in the exact same fucking situation I was in before. Tommy needs money. All right, moving on to someone totally different. Well, well not, no. not totally different. <laughs> I would say totally the same. N back yeah. in the 60s, black and white Americans marched shoulder to shoulder to put an end to white racism in America. Today, we need to put an end to black racism in America. Hello, everybody. Wild Bill for America here. And I believe that racism would have died out years ago in this country, except that some people discovered that racism could be very profitable, both financially and politically. Let me guess. And the Liberals. black racist movement was formed exclusively by the Democrat Party. Oh, Democrats you see, Party. The Democrats need lots of poverty and lots of chaos to stay in power. They gin up votes by keeping one skin color, hating and envying other skin colors. And today, those snakes have taken their despicable skin color politics so far that American law enforcement officers are being assassinated in our streets. Gee, do you think the Democrats will now back off their politics of hate? Oh, no, they won't. They now have the chaos that they wanted. Chaos? Blacks are now murdering um, white people. Chaos. The chaos. The chaos uh, that they wanted? Yeah, Not to mention, have you, chaos, have you ever dude. been to a, a Trump rally? Have you ever, like, even when there was, like, a Sarah Palin rally, they had people showing up like, I hate niggers, and it's like, okay. That's kind of a strange thing to just randomly chant. I still remember there was, like, some old dude who's just like, I ain't gonna have no Negro president. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that, this is the people we're dealing with, and to say it's like this is a Democrats only thing. Hey, am I, I'm not going to deny that Democrats are probably used race. Of course not. Do, yeah. Do the Democrats fucking uh, play for the black vote? Of course they do. Yes, of course. But it's not that hard to do when the Republicans are over there saying like, "Can't trust them." You know. I mean, like you guys, you guys fucking adopted the Southern strategy. You decided, like, our best bet is to fucking win by appealing to fucking southern white males who, guess what, are pretty fucking racist. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, they totally play that r the race card up. Like, that's how it's kind of presented. It's like, you want a bunch of blacks around here causing problems? It's like, oh, no, I'm scared of them. Like, I mean, both of these sides play the race card against course. each other. Both Why wouldn't them, they? Both of them use black America as a fucking pawn in their fucking game. Just like yep. all of us are fucking pawns in their fucking game. Yep. So, I mean, like, once again, you just have Wild Bill telling, like, half the truth. He's, <laughs> not, he's not willing to tell the other side of the truth. He just wants to fucking, oh, selectively, here's this side. It's like, okay, you're just another fucking demagogue. You're just another fucking guy who's fucking trying to sell a fucking agenda instead of fucking trying to present the fucking reality of the fucking situation. They have been taught from childhood to have a chip on their shoulders because white people are allegedly responsible for all their problems. Get Whitey generates a lot of votes for corrupt, low moral politicians. The Democrat Party is not going to give up their racism any more than they're going to give. See, I disagree that the Democrats like foster the, that shit. I mean, I agree that there are fucking black kids that are raised to fucking hate Whitey and, you know, don't trust the man and fuck the police and all that shit. That definitely I don't is think true. Get, get Whitey's not a major platform of the Democratic Party. Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe the Democrats, like, play to that sometimes or whatever. Or like, yeah, we understand, you know, or whatever. But they didn't create that. The black community created that for its fucking self. I mean, I think it's racist of you to sit here and say, like, the only ideas in black people's heads are ones white people put in there for them. Like, bullshit. They, come, they came up with their own fucking ideas. Well, not to mention, he acts like, you know... Some like are good, some the, are bad. The redneck families in Louisiana are sitting there not, t not telling their kids, like, we love black people, they just hate us. We, I, I don't know why. No, that, that's not the conversation that's going on. I mean, there's racists on both sides. Let's just be honest. There's there's just tons of racists in America, and they come I, in every I, fucking I shape in, and size. I grew up in California, and there was profound amounts of racism. Anecdotal, I know, but there were profound amounts of racism where I grew up. Yeah, but there's racism on the black side too. Yeah, of there's course. Racism, there's every race. racism everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. I mean, oh, Scotty, yeah. you went to a majority black uh, school when you were living when you were we were living in Baton Rouge. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you encountered fucking racism against your skin yeah, there, color. Yeah, there, there's definitely a bunch of there's definitely a bunch of people that just didn't give a shit. Then there was definitely teachers and other people <laughs> that are like, "You white, you suck." You know, that's that was it. Just life. That's just life. Up their number one fundraising tool, the global warming scam. To make I'm sorry, what? The global warming scam. What the fuck is the connection to any of this? With God, this guy's such a fucking sycophantic fucking demagogue for fucking conservatism. It's just like disgusting. Just like the global warming scam. It's like I'm gonna it, I'm gonna talk about race. How do I weave global warming being a scam in there? Fuck it. I'll just say it ad hoc and let it let it float there. Like what? <laughs> like what? we weren't even I mean, talking about. <laughs> I'm hoping he's gonna make some sort of connection. Oh, now. I'm sure. Worse, the Democrats have been importing millions of illegals and Islam. Okay, no, it's just out of nowhere. It's just out of left field bullshit. Thomas from terrorist nations <laughs> as a way of packing the ballot boxes with illegal votes to overwhelm the votes of patriotic Americans who want to uphold the um, high standards of American culture and history. There's always lots of immigration in our when country. we try to institute common sense laws to ensure the integrity of our elections, corrupt judges strike those laws down saying it's too much of a burden to require people to obtain a free government government ID card. Listen up, America. Across the black KKK is now murdering and terrorizing our police officers and citizens, and we better get the tough. Black Not only with them, but with the political hacks and the hate monger educators who created this problem. If you agree with this message, then please pass it on to as many people as possible. And please consider joining the Outlaws Chapel at www.outlawschapel.com. And please consider clicking that donate button on that page God, to help Brad us make Kane a difference. Now? This is Wild Bill for America. Thank you for watching, and America, bless God. I again. will say one good thing about Wild Bill. 
he at least knows to get right into his bullshit. Yeah. He never he doesn't usually sit there and tell you like, "Oh, you know, I was going to do this video last week, but then, you know, I got sick and my foot was twisted. I twisted my ankle and I was hurt, so I was laying on the couch for a while." And it, you know, there's none of that bullshit. This, it's just like the video starts, he's like, "Fuck liberals," and then it ends. And Yep. But but it's just fuck it just shows donate. Yeah, but just shows such a lack of depth on his part because he just he looks at these issues from only one perspective, which is like, look, the guy that shoot, shot the cops in Dallas was he was a Black Lives Matter leader. You know, he wants them dead. He's they're terrorists. They're all just a bunch of terrorists. And it's like, what does he need depth for? I mean, it would just it would just. What do you mean? Why does he need depth? It because would just it would just fucking fuck his his whole shtick up. Yeah, it would ruin I mean, his you know. fucking revenue stream completely. But yeah, yeah but that's the problem. The, the, the on world, both the world sides. needs more uh, rational, insane people, not less. And Wild Bill is definitely. I mean, it's sad, but yeah, there are people that actually listen to this guy because we've seen him speak at events, and it's like, yeah, everyone's. I just I just can't believe that anyone would, would listen to this and just give it any sort of credibility. But you know, yeah, everybody's looking for somebody to listen to. That's the problem in America. Everybody's looking for somebody to tell them what they think about uh, an issue. Nobody wants to go and read and form their own opinions anymore. We're all looking for a Wild Bill or an Anita Sarkeesian to tell us how the world works and how, sh how we should feel about things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Let's see what this Next is. Video. I, I gotta... Where oh, the fuck okay. is it? Okay, there. Yeah, you're on there now. Church of Tones. I have a question. I actually have a special request. Uh, and that is, can you please stop saying all lives matter? We get it. We know. This is a personal request from someone who has social media and Facebook and phone. Um, look, I mean, what, if someone wants to say all lives matter as opposed to black lives matter, who cares? That's just their decision. I don't really get this, let me make this plea video and you need to change your opinion and listen to me and I know what's best for everyone. Yeah. We've already heard this argument made. We've already, heard, we've already heard both sides of it that, that say, this is why you should say Black Lives Matter as opposed to all lives. It's just a stupid, trivial fucking thing. Personally, I'm in the no lives matter camp. Well, why are we never represented in this? Because I, I see plenty of people tweeting no lives matter, but no one ever brings us into the discussion. Okay. I, I, I just love these videos in. where people are pretending they're making like an outreach video, but they're really just making a video for people who already agree with them. Yeah. Because like, who's going to, who's going to take you up on this offer? Can you please stop saying something? Hmm. Let me wait. Let me weigh this. Say whatever the fuck I want, whenever the fuck I want, or let this dumb bitch decide what I talk about. Hmm. Which one am I going to go with? I don't know. You know what? I think I'll just defer to you. It's like, why would I do that? I mean, even if you were right, I'm not just going to fucking stop saying something just because you fucking tell me to. Who would? What sort of authority figure are you to anybody? We're using SJW logic. Somewhat. The ability to listen and reason and then react accordingly. Please stop using hashtag all lives matter. You sound like a condescending piece of shit. Uh, no. no that's how you, you sound. You sound like yeah. a condescending piece yeah. of shit. Yeah, you, you who have decided that you get to decide what I say and when I say it and how I use whatever I want to use language wise sound like a condescending piece of shit. This yeah. is a condescending piece of shit video. <laughs> when a house is burning down, you don't pour water on all of the houses because all houses matter. We can talk about how if everyone at the table has a plate of food except for one person and they want a plate of food, we don't say, well, all plates matter. No, these okay. are not valid comparisons or analogies. Like, I, 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 I'm sorry, but we're talking about, like, you know, life and human life. It's something that is, you know, extremely precious to many people. It's not the same thing to say as, you don't have a plate of food. Well, guess what? If you're in a restaurant, maybe he got there later and didn't fucking order it at the same time as you. And you can still go get a plate of food. You can't go get another fucking life, you idiot. <laughs> or yeah, a house. Not only, not only that, like, uh... The black community is not akin to, like, a house on fire while the white community is, like, just a normal house. Just okay. Like, there's plenty of impoverished fucking white people. There's actually more total fucking people, white people living in poverty than black people living in poverty, even though black people disproportionately live in poverty. 
So, I mean, like, it's not like, oh, what, white people ain't got no problems, and then black people, they, all the problems are black well, But people's. no, but it's, it's not like when I see, like, the police kill some un unarmed black person, I'm sitting there saying, oh, well, it's okay, they should kill some other unarmed person of another race. Like, I don't want them to do it, period. I want it, the change to be total, not just like, well, just based upon race, this race needs special treatment. It's like, no, it should happen to nobody. That's why I think more is the thrust of saying all lives matter. This shouldn't happen to a single fucking person. There, there, the, there is no fucking evidence that the police, like, specifically target black people to shoot. They've shot tons of unarmed white people, too. True. And if you look at the fucking statistics of, like, how much more police deal with black people as compared to white people, it's the numbers are about what you'd expect them to be. So they're no more likely to shoot a black person than a white person. It's just they deal with black people more. But to that point, wouldn't someone just say that that's because they're prejudicial and they're, they're actually looking to encounter black people more and stopping them more? Uh, no, it's because black people commit more crime. Oh, Cheska Lee's many videos on impact versus intent. What you think you're saying versus what you're actually saying. No, that's not. That, that's just their interpretation. No. That's not what you're actually saying. I don't that need, is your interpretation. I don't need some dumb bitch to tell me the intent of what I'm saying. I can decide that myself. I don't need to watch a video series to tell me that what I'm saying isn't what I'm saying, and here's what I'm actually saying when I say what I say. What, who would ever take you <laughs> up on that proposition? Jesus. Now, if all of these have escaped your social media, congratulations, you follow all of the wrong people. So let's fix that in 2016. But as, let's not. As your potential Facebook friend, probably not. Let me tell you that if I see you write All Lives Matter, I'm a swoop on that ass. I can't be held accountable. Oh, shit. I'm scared now. No, yeah, please don't. Please, please don't sir. argue with me. I don't know please. what I would do. Please don't. I mean, um, TJ, I'm, if you... I, oh, go as ahead. As a fellow person of size, I can't imagine myself swooping anywhere. So <laughs> this, this looks like a big bitch. Uh, I don't think you swoop anywhere. You kind of you you roll. She would, like, waddle over to it. She'd yeah. waddle over to the comment. Or kind of maybe, like, uh, slither, like, yeah, a shamble. Yeah, shamble. Stumble oh. over there for the reasonable, beautiful things I'm going to say. First of all, you don't understand the origin of- You're not reasonable, for one. Or the importance of what it's doing in the world right now. And because you don't understand that hashtag All Lives Matter was really a very condescending response to hashtag- That's your interpretation of it. It's, no, it's not okay. condescending. Yeah, that's your perception okay. of events. Yeah, I mean, you could say it's condescending if you want. In your opinion, you can think that, The sure. intent was not condescending, okay? I, guarantee, I, I, I understand completely the intent behind All Lives Matter. I think what it means is all lives matter, which is not a condescending statement whatsoever. I don't think black lives matter is a condescending statement either. No. It's fine. Black lives matter. All lives matter. You know that black is a fucking subcategory of all, right? So they're still in there. So what the fuck? What's the problem? An attempt at erasing actual problems that are happening in the world. Actual no, it's not. And the effects of that racism. Actual racism. What is that? What is actual racism? Oh, it's when someone is racist to a black person. That's not actual racism. It's when when racism is just total racism. It's when you make a judgment based upon someone's race or you know ethnic origin. That's what racism is. It's not this fucking bullshit definition you're gonna throw out probably any second now. Put into the hands of people who have too much power and access to weapons and aren't necessarily accounted for in their actions. And no, that is not me saying that I'm anti-cop. I'm not anti-cop. I'm anti-racism. And I'm anti the power being in the wrong hands. And if we're really good- The wrong Yeah, hands. so you're saying it's, you don't- you, people like you don't control everything, so that's the big problem. I go on that tangent. First of all, if you're someone who promotes All Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter because you support police, but you are very upset or offended at Black Lives Matter, you need to ask yourself, what word in that upsets you? Hashtag Black um, no. It's not one of the words that upsets me. It's the behavior of the people in the group. Okay? I don't hate Black Lives Matter because they have the word black in it. I hate Black Lives Matter because I've seen them chanting to kill cops. I've seen them screaming to kill all white babies. I've seen articles written by Black Lives Matter people telling that, saying that, like, white people aren't welcome at our events because... 
you know, they're just trying to steal our thunder and shit. Right, right. I mean, I, I've, I've seen so many examples of racism come from Black Lives Matter. They're an extremely divisive group. They're not really a group that is bringing their issues to the forefront right. in a way that is like like a reasonable conversation with somebody. And, and when they say that, they say, oh, we're trying to stop us from being angry. No, it's fine to be angry, but you're not really engaging anyone with your anger. You're just, you're just trying to take over the entire platform and say, just listen to us. You have no right to have an opinion. You have no right to discuss this. We're just correct. And how, how is that a conversation? It's not. How is this a conversation? The conversation is, stop saying this because I said so. And I'm right because I'm right. It's like, fuck you, you tub of shit. <laughs> Although you do look like my, like my sister from an alternate dimension or some shit. Black Lives <laughs> Matter does not mean that you are anti-cop. I know that's like an oversimplification. It's not being anti-cop. What it is, is recognizing that racism exists in this country. There's no way you're going to no get one denies that. racism within a generation. There are people still alive in the world who were around when black people couldn't drink at certain water fountains, were hosed down for protesting. You couldn't marry outside yep. of your race. Like, that was within the past generation. That doesn't just go away because some laws changed. Like, no one that's just that's, 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 what, like, what are you oh, talking fuck. about? That's why it went away, is because it was like, you know what? These laws are wrong. What are you yeah. talking about? That, that that is the exact reason why that these things went away is because there's actually laws to change them and codify the rules of our society. That's what laws are, you fucking idiot. Like, what, what more could be done? Okay, she's already said, like, okay, the laws have changed. Well, what are you going to do now? Legislate people's fucking sentiments? Legislate how people are allowed to feel? Well, what? judging from the fact that this entire video is about how we're allowed to speak, I think you might be onto something there. Yeah, I think I am. What's the point uh, Bill Maher's brought up a plenty of times in his stand-up? He's like, you know, I don't want to legislate my opinion, basically. Like, let's be more factual. Let's be more thorough with these things. And I mean, like, yeah, when it comes to these laws, like, you know, separate but equal and stuff, I don't think many people agree with those laws anymore. I mean, yeah, there might be some. But, it's, I mean, yeah, it, it, it did happen recently. But we have to move forward. We can't just sit there and say, okay, the past was bad. Yeah, you can't forget the past. But at the same time, societies have to grow and change and evolve. Dude, the black people are the ones that are fucking segregationists now, all right? I mean, it's like, I see so many things like, we need a safe space. It's sad, white, too. white people are not allowed here because we're doing this. And they even, like, at our protest, you can't come because it's our protest. It's pretty pathetic. And it's like, um, you know, fuck you. Sorry. That's dumb. I'm not, I don't agree with that. I'm not on board with that. There's nothing you're going to say to me ever that's going to make me on board with that. I don't know why, man. That's the blueprint for a successful movement. You know, uh, non-inclusivity. Like, let's just have this little insular group and fuck everybody else. And that's how we're going to get our point across. Yeah, that's going to work out real well. Everyone's going to be on their side. Well, we like black people now, I guess, because they have some rights. So we're definitely not going to pass this prejudice and racism down to our children quietly in the comfort of our homes. Or go to our jobs where we can drink. Okay, it's their right to do that if they fucking want to do that. Yeah, you're not, you're not the arbiter of reality. And, you know, it's not like everything you just want, that, that should just happen. Yeah, there's definitely people that go home and are racist. And there are plenty of those people who are white and black and Hispanic or whatever. So for you to characterize it as if it's just black families go home and, like, wish just white people accepted us and that was it. Like, no, there's plenty of people who are just like, the system is stacked against us. I hate all these people. I wish they would all die. Directly affect the black community and abuse our power in any kind of way because we have our own prejudices. How many Everyone anecdotal does, you fucking do idiot. You do. And see and live of people actually being afraid of someone because of the color of their skin. To deny systemic racism, to sit here and say white people and brown people and black people are all treated. Okay, systemic racism would be if the laws reflect. Okay, that. but this is just an what argument. What you're talking about is people's opinions. This is just an argument from incredulity. That's all it is. Like, I'm incredulous this is happening. I don't, like, how could you possibly have a different opinion than me? This is ridiculous. This is so, so bizarre. This is, is this some bizarro world? Mm -hmm. You are absolutely ignorant. And you're lying to yourself. And you're lying to everyone else. And because you're lying, and you're completely avoiding the How truth, can you make the determination the these people are doing that in line? The continued murder of black people with no justice. Literally. Mm. Yep. Okay. You've seen the arguments in my comments being Every time you type in all lives matter, you contribute into black death. Yep. You know what presence she has? She's gonna tell you this are these are be the comments where people are gonna make these ridiculous arguments against me because they just don't agree with me because they just don't understand what's going on because they support all lives matters and they're just racist. If you fucking think that all lives matter, you're part of the problem, buddy. You are. Because you know, that's how black people get killed.
Well, what she's saying you're basically just looking away. Like you're, you're just evaluating that as a problem. You're just saying, oh, if you focus on all, then you're not focusing on these problems in the black community, like systemic racism that's going on, and you're just turning a blind eye to that. You don't care. Can you imagine if you went back to like 20 years ago and told people like, you know, in 20 years, the term all lives matter will be considered racist. It's like, they'd be like, what? Yeah, like, why? You'll see. Yeah, you'll see. Bye. It's like, fuck. Oh, Jesus. David, Jesus. All right, with that, I think it's about time we wrap up this episode. Uh, everyone, like, subscribe. Uh, you know, it. it is kind of weird doing pre-recorded episodes, but we wanted to make sure you guys had content because we're gone. We're gone as fuck right now. We're gone. Yeah, Nowhere here. near any of this shit. And if our meetup in New Orleans hasn't happened, go to it. It has not happened. Okay, yet. then go to the fucking New Orleans meetup. Yep. Go there. Do that. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.